Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are we? How is it going? It's going. <laughs> it's going. It is going. I mean, I finished. Oh, uh, I finished Sorry. the handhelds section of uh, the Mister video yesterday. Whew. So that's yep. good. I've almost. I'm almost uh, finished with the with the Sega section. Um, I. <laughs> It's like I'm so over this video. Like I've I've gone around completely, like like a hundred, like from being like into it, then over it, and then back into it, then completely over it again. I have no idea uh, how long it's going to be by the time, like the the total runtime. I'm starting to feel like it it, it could realistically be two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so stupid I, to say I, that. I don't think so. It's I don't know. Long. I don't know, man. It's it's very very possible. <laughs> well, it's uh, I, I, I'm I, from my end. I feel like I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, and me too. Me too. But like, I've laid down everything that we have, and it's it's an hour thirty five right now, and we still have arcade. There can um, be an hour left to edit. There's no way there's an hour left to edit. That's true. I that mean, would be, you that would probably be probably have, horrifying. I mean, we don't know how long that PC segment is going to be, though. That's the thing. It, it's not. And I, I, like, it's I, not I, like, realistically, it, it won't be that long. It, it, but it, it can't be that long because we're not the right people to really. I know. It, I know? understand so, that. So, I mean, you know, it just it is what it is, you know computers you know they're there and they're cool but i don't know that much about how to it's, it's not it's not gonna be it's not gonna be four hours like <laughs> i you know it's stupid it's stupid and like there was a there was a time where i said i don't really want this to be over an hour because i feel like it might scare people yeah yeah that it's too <laughs> complicated thank you tinderbird <laughs> <laughs> thank you Thank you. But anyway, uh, I, mean, I, I, you know, there was a time where I was like, you know, I don't want to be over an hour. I'm afraid it will scare people out of the message that we are trying to impart is that it's actually not that hard. No. And it's not that hard. It's just that there's so much that it can do. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a thing. It's like, yes, we could do two videos and we talked about it. We like, should, maybe we should have, well, I mean, it's, it's there, there's two sides to this. Like I've said before, we have a really poor track record of actually making the second part of videos. When we say in a future video, you know, and if we had planned it that way from the start, we probably would be. Yeah. I don't know about that. Right. So, but the, then like, there was a thought when, once we were, were already so far underway, there was kind of a thought like, like, why don't, don't we know. just like do a hard cut or just like have like add something at the very end. And we, you know, but, like that's, that is something that we could still do. I, mm, the thing is we, the way we restructured the video, like I just, I don't think it would work. I don't think it would work that way anymore. If it was like Mr. Set up in settings, and then Mister the cores like that would work. But now that we've got set up to where the cores are interspersed throughout it, I don't yeah. think it works that. Way. I don't think I don't think two videos will work anymore. We're going to finish it. We're going to finish. It. It's going to be like, I mean, it shouldn't. Realistically, it shouldn't be more than like a week's worth of more work. It shouldn't be. Right. And we could make it not that much more than a week's more worth of work. You know, I mean, like you're almost done with the Sega video arcades. Like that's like probably what you're most excited about anyway. Like, yeah. And, and you know, there's not a lot of like a lot to really cut. There's a lot of arcade games and the cores are all like kind of different. They have different options and stuff but like I think, that. I think you need to kind of just be broad. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, broader, I already... like, kind of like I did the pre NES consoles, like kind of talk about some common characteristics or qu yeah, certain yeah. quirks that you might be likely to find among these cores, but don't mm -hmm. go into super specifics. Oh, I, I you know? believe me. I have no so, intention of doing that. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that it's this long, but I, I feel like once it's all like, you know, people are sitting down and watching it. 
it's going to be really well paced because each segment is like like five to fifteen minutes. Yeah, like it is like moving between things like yeah. every five. Oh to 15 yeah, minutes. yeah. It's 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 so snappy, really. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's going to be it'll be uh, like a, it'll be a real party when we're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that it has taken this long. And I mean, you were saying, oh, I really want to have all this stuff finished with Analog Frontiers, like before my Red Giant Universe expires which, at the, in, at the beginning like, of March. Which was like nine like days. Happened. It was like nine days ago it expired. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like for that, you'll just have to like, just like buy one, the one month that you need. Can when, you or do when it you for only it. one month? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. That's good to know. Anyway, but there was. A $5 super chat from Pixel Phoenix saying, Howdy, fellas. It is a nice surprise to see an RPG for a stream, let alone Final Fantasy. I greatly welcome it. Well, what would it be if not Final Fantasy? You know? <laughs> I mean, I, so, something that I've kind of had on my... something we both have finished, excuse me, have finished before. Yeah, I mean, something that I've had on my mind for a while is... Why... Like, like RPGs, like when you, when you haven't played them before, they're not for us. They're, they're, they're bad stream content for us because like, I just find it really difficult to like read the text, pay attention to streaming, listen to Corey. Like I, I yeah. lose track of what characters are saying and what they're saying. What, where do I yeah, need to go? What do I need to do? I'm, to play. I'm not, but like, again, like this, I'm playing to just mash through the text. I mean, it's been like, I think about 11 years since I last played this on the PSP. I mean, I played it, but like the first time I like played it with the intent, any serious intent of getting anywhere. Um, yeah. And I just booted this up like on so many different systems uh, for the Mr. Video. And mm -hmm. I, I, it just like kind of got me in the mood. Like, man, like I, like I want to push further into this and I feel like it wouldn't take, like, I just want, I just want to see, like, no, I don't know speed running strats. I, you know, I, I I don't even know this game possibly as well as some other Final Fantasies, like maybe six or seven. But uh, I know it pretty well. It's I know it pretty well. And I know enough people mm -hmm. in the chat if I, you know, lose track of where I'm going, enough people will be able to tell me, oh, you need to go yeah. to, you know, the the antlion cave or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, so I, my, I, you have my save files. You have my childhood save files. I, I do because at some point. So this is my original cartridge. Uh, and when I say my original cartridge, it was used when I got it, but it mm -hmm. it is my cartridge. Um, and you know, I I'm not playing hard type. I'm not playing a, a hack. You know, some people talk about the naming way hack or whatever. I, I, I yeah, I know it's easy type, but like I'm not looking for a challenge tonight, other than. Like, I just want to see how far I can get. I don't know how far I could get in the span of a street. I really don't yeah. know. And we don't have to worry about spoilers, you know, and it's just, it is, it is what it is. You know, like this is, for the longest time, this was my favorite game in the series. It's. And it, over time, you know, six has become my favorite. I, but. Th you know. This, this is definitely, I think, climbed up for me. Like, I mean. It happened a long time ago, really, that it climbed up for me. Like, when I first played it, I'm like, this was good, but, you know, it was, you know, pretty pretty basic, right? But uh, I later on, I started to appreciate that basicness, right? Just, like, the characters are what they are. There's no, like, system to learn for, you know, learning skills and things like that. You know, you've got your white mage. You've got your summoner. Yeah. You've got your dragoon. You know, you're, you know, everyone just, they are what they are. You know, there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot, which I like customization. I love the Final Fantasy V job system. I absolutely love it. But, uh, I, I just, you know, I, I like the straightforwardness of this. Like I, I often yeah. have sort of thought of this game, like, I don't know if this is a weird comparison, but, but I've always kind of thought of it in some ways, like almost like Star Wars, A New Hope. Where like it's yep. this it's this really good, well told, tightly paced story that like stands on its own. Like uh, you know, Star Wars Episode Four didn't need the sequels. Of course, you know, 
you know, I mean, it ends in a way that there wasn't going to be any sequels. Right, right. You know, it, it, it was not at all necessary for there to be sequels. Uh, and it, it's it, when you think of it as a standalone movie, it actually really works. I mean, it mm-hmm. works as a first part of a trilogy as well, but it really works as a standalone. And, yeah. uh, of course, all Final Fantasies are standalone, but I don't know. Just something about the the purity and simplicity of the story they tell with this game. Uh, yes. Like, it just, it works. It just works. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was uh, 999 from Chris Shaman. Oh, thanks, Chris. And, uh, you know, uh, Chris is, is, is an old friend of mine, and we grew up with these games, you know, and we... He says, uh, yes, uh, Corey, did you play this before Final Fantasy 3 or after? I cannot remember. Uh, trying to not, not to spoil, but what is your favorite moment from this game? Uh, you know, I, I played this before Final Fantasy 3, but uh, I got this after I had played Lunar the Silver Star on the Sega CD. So this was my first Super Nintendo RPG. Uh, up until that point, I was just kind of buying whatever or getting for Christmas whatever was like an R- whatever whatever was available on like the Genesis and or a Sega CD. And Lunar Silver Star really you know kicked my love for RPGs like into high high gear. And so you know, I that, bought this. That, that game has like much like uh, higher detail. Isn't there an item in like one of the jars down here? Um, there, there's, um, there's like a lot more, like larger character sprites in Lunar. So like, did this, this is like visually it's, kind of like a Super Nintendo plus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean this, I remember thinking like, oh, this isn't, or, I mean, good. I mean NES plus. Yeah. I, I did not feel as though this game looked very good, you know, right off the bat, but I, you know, it didn't really matter to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I played a, you know, a bit before Final Fantasy three came out. And, you know, there's there's a couple of favorite moments that I have um, from this game. And I'm, I'm not going to worry about spoilers because, like, you know... We're, we're going to assume most of y'all have played this. Yeah, or you don't care at this point. Yeah. Uh, my Probably my favorite part is when, um, when you first get the big whale. Yeah, I mean, getting the lunar whale is... is... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, that's you know, hard to talk. You know, when the music kicks in, it's like coming out of the water. Yeah. Just, it just amazing. I was like not expecting that at all. Like I was not expecting to like leave, like go into space at all in this game. I, I, I also loved like going underground and like, here's this like yeah. whole world that you don't like, they don't really have any contact with. And I, that was something I always appreciated about, um, the um, the Super Nintendo Final Fantasies that was lost with uh, the PlayStation era largely uh, that you had like two at least two world maps per game like like there there were you know either another world or another way out to the existing world mm-hmm. or you know another. Yeah moon and underground like there's always like the world you know you you explore the entire world and then discover there's more you know yes like that's that's pretty cool in these super Nintendo yeah. ones and my other favorite part you know is like right at the very end of the game like i love when everybody you've met along the way shows back up to like revive revive your party and and that's spoiled i think by this idea when you know the re-releases is like oh we gotta do something well how about we let them choose their party for the final battle you know so you can have like i don't remember if tell is an option but like i think you'd have like polym and porum and um uh oh you can get them back even though they're still like i i like the fact that you know, like there's there's a lot of characters that die in this, and most of them come back, but there's certain ones that, you know, that stay dead. Yeah, and like I think you'd have Sid in the party. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of I mean, these characters sacrifice themselves, and you know I love this because this was the first time, you know I think of this right here, not the crystal 
theme, but like this, like this is like the main Final Fantasy I, theme to me. I agree. I agree. And this is, I think that isn't this, except for 12, isn't this the only time that this appears or like is heard like before the ending credits? No, it's in Final Fantasy 1 as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. After right. after you beat Garland and then I yeah. think you report back to the king of Cornaria. You, mean, you mean Jack? Jack, Jack Garland. Garland. <laughs> and then uh, I think the bridge is built and then there's the opening thing. It has like, you know, some some developer credits. Uh, yeah. I forget if Final Fantasy 2 and 3 have it at the start. But then like Final Fantasy 10 didn't have this in the credits. That was like a massive disappointment. Yeah. Final yeah, Fantasy 12 it, no, it, uses it's like, uses it in the uh, the file select screen. Wait, yeah, wait, this, this to me this is the Final Fantasy thing. Yeah. The first, and I, I love the way that it plays, you know, during the opening movie, I guess in 12 because I wasn't expecting it cuz you hadn't heard it like really outside of the like the very ending credits in a long time. And yeah. I, I've I've de I've demonstrated this I think with how uh, uh, Ocarina of Time was a letdown to me when um, you first go into into Hyrule Field and it doesn't play the Zelda theme. Mm. So I like I I get very attached to like certain pieces of music and I get really disappointed when it's no longer in a game like in mm. its like usual spot. I'm gonna make my save on my cart since I lost my old saves. You're going to save over my number one. I, I I mean, I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was your best one or not. But, it is. That's my end, end game. Right but there. there were, there were like three that were in game. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't like, uh, that I used a different color. For yeah. The, I did not like that you used a different. I, color. I don't, I don't like that either. Now I look back and I'm like, I, I kind of want to save over it, I, but at the same time, like I, I feel as though I can't. Why is the, why is the uh, but, you know, I get really disappointed when certain songs are kind of removed. And uh, I, I was I was disappointed even like in Final Fantasy seven when the when you win a battle, it doesn't continue on with. the. Oh, the, it's like a new version. Like, yeah, like it's not even a new version. It's like because after like the. Well, no, the it's initial, like. Yeah, I, I was like, why did they do have to do that? Because I remember. Because this was the first one I played, and then when I played um, Final Fantasy III, all these returning themes, you know, like when the uh, when the crystal plays over uh, the file select and stuff like that, I was like, okay, that's when it kind of sunk into me that these are themes that that have been around, like been with the uh, with the series for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when that stuff is removed, I'm like, oh. Yeah, and I, I I feel I feel that that way too. I mean, those those musical traditions are important. Yeah. All right, I got a, I got a few donations to catch up on here. Uh, there was five dollars from Blake Romo. Thank you. Thank you. Saying uh, at this point, is it safe to assume that the Mister is going to be the ultimate emulation th uh, machine for everything, uh, pre for pretty much everything retro in the gaming genre? Uh, I mean, with the way things are going, it's it's looking like, you know. It's, it's going to be hard to top it. I, you know, I was just talking. You know, I just you know, randomly I was... remembered while I was trying to find a shortcut. <laughs> Doesn't this version of the game like actually show you where the where the yes the hidden you can paths kind of see are? Them there. Yeah, so I don't need to even bother. Um, but I, I it'd be hard to think of anything else that's that's going to be coming along anytime soon that's going to get this same level of uh, of focus. Yeah. I think. And, you know, I was saying the other day, and it, yeah, yeah, I, I guess it was like after the, uh, the, the Sony state of play when, when the, uh, when Ninja Turtles was announced, it just got me thinking about like a lot of these comp like developers that are just like mainly doing, uh, like emulation compilations for like really, for like older games, like it's gotta be real intimidating at this point because there's constantly stuff being added to the, to the mister. So it's like, I wonder if anybody's like, ah, you know, like not a lot of people are buying this right now. I mean, in the, in the grand scheme of things, 
you know, like, I wonder if it's got to feel, like, intimidating. Like, they can't, like, it's gonna, it's really hard to compete with that. Oh. With, like, you know, updates that can drop at, like, any, any time, like, post-release, I guess. But, you know, like, that's just me being over the top, because most people, they want to buy, like, Ninja Turtles, uh, Kawabunga Bundle, <laughs> uh, you know, like they don't care. Like they don't. They don't follow anything else. Yeah. I mean, and I'm gonna get Ninja let, Turtles. Let, yeah, we're gonna buy it, even has... though like I can play my NES and Game Boy carts. And, yeah, and, and you know, I will I can play, my play my arcade NES. PCB. Yeah, <laughs> but but I'm still gonna buy it because it's like that's really cool. That... Well, the honestly, the art. I mean, the you're, you're like not. You're you're so much more likely probably <laughs> actually to play that collection than you are to play your arcade PCB. Yeah, exactly. That's true. But I think that like on a you know, I, I wonder if people feel like if any developers out there feel like any kind of maybe like a little bit of intimidation of like, I don't know if we can like compete with like, like in the long run, we can't com is it difficult to compete with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, Anyways, there's also nine ninety nine from uh, from Singer eighty. Thank, Thank you. you. Saying uh, you spoony bard. <laughs> Thank that's, you. That's, and there's nineteen ninety nine from Sean Quinn. Thank you. And I'd like to see a behind the scenes video of the making of the Mister video. I want to see everything. I want to see the laughs, the tears. At some point, try sh should be shaking his fist at God, and Corey gets a musical number. <laughs> if if only it was that. I exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is, you know, it's it's not like that. It's I, I almost feel numb to it at this <laughs> point. <laughs> there is no musical numbers. There's um a mist dragon fight uh in between uh uh Stormblood and Shadowbringers and Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, okay. during the, the interim storyline between those two expansions. <laughs> you, you just, like, do nothing while the dragon is missed, right? Yeah, but it's teaching you some valuable skills. For me, this it, this game was really tough to wrap my head around the battle system because I didn't quite understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. It felt really stressful to me at the time because... Well, you didn't, you didn't know that... I didn't know the existence of ATB... And right, even they hide ATB it. They hide the ATB. Until, what? The ATB is hidden. I right. want to say the GBA and PSP versions might actually show it. I forget. Oh, for sure. I, yeah, that stuff is all on screen at that point. But for someone who had never played an RPG that, I guess, that, that it moves even when you're still like making a decision, mm -hmm. it, it felt real stressful to me at the time. Well, you know, it was actually weird to me uh, you know, having started with like Chrono Trigger and uh, uh, Final Fantasy Seven, Final Fantasy Six, uh, it was weird to me to go to games like Final Fantasy One or Dragon Quest, where you enter all of your commands at the beginning of a turn. It's like, well, how? how am I going to know like what I want to do? Like, what if I want to heal? What, like what if an enemy attacks me and well, I that's, then that's need the to heal? Point. like, you got to plan it out. I know, but like, I didn't, you know, I didn't used to think that of course, like in dragon quest, if you, that felt stressful in its own way. To if you turn your allies on, uh, auto mm -hmm. then, or, or on AI, then they can cheat. And uh, they'll like they'll change like they'll change what like, they were gonna do like well I, I like if you take damage that did not exist at the beginning of the round they might <laughs> heal you um but like Dragon right. Quest Eleven is interesting because if you play in three D mode then you do enter your command like when your character's turn comes up. But if you play in 2D mode, it's the classic, like, enter all of your commands at the beginning of the fight. 
I, cool. I don't I don't like using the AI characters though personally. So. Mm -hmm. Do, do we? Uh, do there's... you actually have to fight to fight Rydia, or you just like defend? I forget. You you, you call her Rydia? Is it? Do you, do you say Ridia? Yeah, I've always said Ridia. I, I don't really know. I have no supposed. idea what's correct. Like that's the joy of these old games is like you, people yeah. came up with their own ways to say a lot of these these fantasy things. My, my, my favorite is I used to me, me and me and my friends used to call Lock Locky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've always said Rydia. Does that does that sound stupid to most people? It does. It, it does not sound right to me. I I could never change over to that. Well, well. Uh, all, all I know is the only reason I've never played uh, the DS version of this game is I, I cannot abide. Oh, voice that? I cannot abide by Cecil being called Cecil. It's just, I know it's always going to be Cecil. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Did you ever Did you ever play uh, Secret of Evermore? Uh, I've played a bit of it, but not a lot. I do have it. I, I've played up to like first or second boss i think mm. okay so i mean so not that far really. no no um so cecil's like a hidden he's like a shop owner oh okay. like a, like a random it's just like a random shop That's like funny. he doesn't really say anything he's just like is that his name is it cecil or does it just look like him no it's cecil he says oh. his name is cecil i think you have like, more I think it's like super like chats the to second last town or something like that do you have more uh, super so, chats to catch up on i think you do Yep, yep. So there was a four ninety nine from uh, Chris Ramsey. Thank you. Uh, saying uh, thoughts on the TMNT Cowabunga bundle. Are you planning on picking it up? And so that that popped up like as I was talking about it before, and that's what made me think about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to. I, w I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of games in it. I was not. A it feels like you wouldn't get the like the NES games or something like that in one of those collections today or like the Game Boy the Game Boy games yeah but I mean you, but still I mean you get like you get the like NES Castlevania and Contra games and stuff like that so it's not right. like people are afraid of Nintendo necessarily no. but still like yeah like I I am you know a weirdo that that actually prefers the uh NES version of, you know, Turtles 2, the arcade game. Just because, like, the... I, I kind of like the smaller sprite style in that, actually. And I also like the two new levels are actually really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you ever really play it, though? Like, in the arcade? In the arcade I mean, with, it like, was... four people at the same time. Not like with friends, but like I like joined like random people playing it in the arcade. Like it was, it was definitely like one of the random uh, games that uh, that I booted up, I guess, uh, or not booted up that that I would play in an arcade game. That I would play in an arcade, like it. It's definitely probably one of the ones I like went to the most, and but you know I, I say this as someone who you know, I'm really not an arcade guy. Well, I mean, I just never played it. I thought, oh, I you, just thought like the character characters didn't look very good. Well, you never hand. played it in the ar arcade or or NES. Oh, I played it in the arcade a ton. You didn't play the NES version. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think it was the first time that I like got a game. I mean, maybe really the only time back then that I like got a game because I saw it in the arcade first. And I was like, oh, I, I want to play that on my NES. And like, I, but it's definitely like, uh, you know, partly just due to exposure to it. Right. That I just I played it more because I had it. Yeah. So I, I kind of came to like it more than the arcade version. So, um, uh, Kashiwa Daisuk uh, is saying, uh, Pro tip, kill the officer before the last soldier so he doesn't escape. 
free oh. experience. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Uh, anyways, there was uh, uh, Mega X Six became a member. Welcome. Welcome. I mean, you're you're here every week, <laughs> but thank you, <laughs> thank you. And there's also two dollars from Blake Romo. Once again, thank you. Saying, uh, you think that the Mister will affect game collecting? Uh, I think it already has. Honestly, for like a certain subset of people, I think that it, it certainly has. Uh, especially, you know. Oh, she already. The, the, one, 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 one quirk of this game is that uh, they they don't necessarily. Oh wait, is the up and down? Does that mean she has it currently? Oh, like, I don't think that they tell doing, you. I think it just means they can equip it. Yeah. Let's see. I, am I supposed to? Did I miss anything, or am I just supposed to move on? I th I think that the Mister has affected game collecting. You know, it's it's been a kind of a perfect storm between game prices like skyrocketing, like during the pandemic, and the Mister like really getting some amazing features. And I think that there's a lot of people that probably are longtime collectors. They were saying, like, I just don't really want to do this anymore. I'm just going to go Mr. Only. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's people probably who are, like, way into it, like, kind of just getting into it during the pandemic that are, that are like, all about it right now. I think it's mostly people that who, like, were, were collecting games, like, before it was, like, a, like, a big thing to do. Go back to Kaifo. Uh, Friendless Wolf Retro says, uh, Mr. Doesn't Kill uh, Collecting for me. It did, however, kill Arcade PCB Collecting for me. And I, that's that's another aspect of it, for sure. I mean, I, there's a lot of things that I was just kind of had on my radar, like arcade boards, and now, like, I haven't looked for them in a long time. Uh, there was $5 from Jonathan Hinson. Thank you. Saying what's up, everybody. Stopping in to say hi. Stuck in Houston for work again. I'll catch the stream tomorrow. Nice. Well, enjoy Houston. I well, I, I say that, but like I'm not the one. It's like I'm I'm not getting rid of my games and moving to Mister. Uh, yeah, I think I think I, I I missed something just because I. Wasn't paying attention to the text. <laughs> I know uh, you go north from Kaipo. I, I run into Rosa somewhere in Kaipo. Is that is that it? Uh, I don't know. But I think, you know, like a lot of the things that I have, like if, if I didn't, if I didn't do like, if we didn't have this channel, like I probably would like not have a lot of the stuff that I have or I would have gotten rid of a lot more probably. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I like to be able to show real games yeah, exactly. on camera. I mean, like, I like to show, like, like the, the thing is, like, I think, you know, it's it's totally fine for, like, the average person to have no interest in, like, having these real things. And the mister is, like, you know, a godsend for, for that kind of person. But uh, I, I think that... Uh, for, for us, though, it's like, well, like, we're showing this stuff. So, like, yeah. it kind of gives me more incentive to feel like, like, here here's the actual thing. Yeah. I mean, we, that we keep all this stuff around so that we can maybe show it for three and a half seconds in a video. Like, <laughs> like five years later. <laughs> like, you know, something yeah. that I said when we were working on the, uh, that Switch controllers video, I'm like, well, this finally, like justifies the fact that we've been putting these limited run games on our business card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's... <sighs> I, I could see why a lot of people would want to, you know, just... that it, it, it does that. It does it for them. You know, and I like the mister as like, just, you know, I can start 
start anything up at a moment's notice. And, you know, like, I think for, like, CD-based consoles, it becomes more appealing to me, too. Uh, with the with the finicky nature sometimes of, like, you know, early CD-ROM hardware. And there's stuff happening, like, with that, with that uh, PlayStation Core... Uh, the developer just like showed something. What was that? He says that like, what what would happen if the PlayStation did not have like some like had a real memory cache or something like that? And I, I sent it to you yesterday. Yeah, I guess the frame rates are high. But see, that kind of thing like that would bug me though because like it would keep, I would keep it in the back of my mind like, oh, what's what's wrong here? Like it's one thing to get like higher frame rates going from like PS4 to PS5. But like that, that would, I don't know. I, it would, it would, it's, but it's, it's not like a huge jump. It's only like, like four or five frames mostly. But, but I get, my point is like, I would, I would be like constantly thinking about like, what's, what's wrong with this? What's like this, like this, this, this but even for five, like if it's just like a, like five frames a second, like extra frames. Like, would you be able to tell it for, like, some of those games that run it, like, you know? I'm not like, saying I wouldn't be able to tell, but I would be suspicious of what the mode is doing. Like, like I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying people shouldn't use it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying, like, that would, like, constantly be on my mind and, like, take me out of the experience. Like, I want, like, I the sli- I mean, like, like, I don't like, see how I, it's all that different then. When, when it comes to emulation, I like... Then, you know, playing a PS4 game, like, on boost mode or not on boost mode. Like, what's what's it doing different? I mean, it's, like, basically the same thing. Right, but, like, I mean, you know... What? I mean, do you, like... I mean, I think that maybe, like, then you just play PS4 games without boost mode on the PS, PS Pro. But, I mean... I mean, like, I, I think it's not that that different than that i i like that is the kind of thing that uh like you know you talk about in the uh in the mr video in the like the portable section you talk about the increased resolution for like the mode 7 sprites in right uh in in the game boy advance and that like i can see it with that because you know you describe it saying like it kind of makes it look like this weird mishmash right which I, um, I, it does look, it like, looks like, like, it, it like looks a, like really a slightly increased frame rate. Like I think that that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's it does look really cool. Yeah, it does look cool, but I can understand like not wanting to use it like all the time. But when it just if it if if this feature only uh, results in just like a slightly higher frame rate at times. You know, a lot of people were asking if they can, r- 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 if r- r- it's r- r- possible for the core can have the thing to not have like texture warping. And I can understand like not wanting to enable that, but if it's just like an extra, like a slightly better frame rate, I think that sounds okay to me. Yeah. Yeah. As, as long as it's trustworthy, you know, as long as it's like a feature that people have like vetted, like, okay, yeah, this, everything's working properly, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, I guess to me, like, that's the difference of like, for example, playing PS4 games on PS5. Like it's, it's something that's like so thoroughly like tested by like so many people, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I have no real reason to doubt it. Real real quick. Do I, is the, I I have to go get the sand ruby or whatever. Is that where, is that where Tella is? Or is that more like Northwest? Uh, it's Tella, I think. Uh, are you copying super chats? I don't think I don't. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Oh. I can I can double check. I think that I am. Yep. You know when I got this, I was trying to I was trying to think earlier today when exactly I got this because there was mm-hmm. one Christmas when I was in high school still. And, you know, this was after I like got back into the NES and I, you know, 
I, I thought it was like the coolest thing that I did. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to ask for like a new N64 game for Christmas this year. I'm going to ask for a bunch of NES and Super <laughs> Nintendo games, you know, and they're cheap. So I can ask for, for, for more than one game. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, cause that's what I always did. I always asked for one, like I get, sometimes I guess I could maybe get like a N64 game and a Game Boy game maybe, but usually I just got one game. Yeah. And, um, and so this was one of the games I asked for. So this was, this is what I was playing on Christmas day in like 1999 or 2000 or something like that. <laughs> like, isn't that kind of cool? I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, my grandfather, Robert Carlson in the chat there, <laughs> he has a good point says, uh, I don't care about what anything I have costs. Either I'm keeping it forever or I'm giving it away when I don't want it anymore. And that it's very much the same way with me where I don't even look at like what anything is even worth. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. Like I, I, I don't even pay attention. Like once I have something that I want, I mean, I, I've thought about like going through like everything and tracking it because like, I felt like I need to maybe do it for uh insurance purposes uh but like i just i just i basically don't even pay attention like i don't watch prices uh i only really see these like these high prices when i find something uh that i really want i'm like oh i wonder how much this is and um then i go and i check it check it out you know i that happened to me yesterday when i was working on the Mr. Video, and I'm like, oh, this game, the Coca-Cola Kid, is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, I wonder how much it is. I, I would buy I would buy a copy of it, and then it's $100. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm basically looking at eBay. Like, I'm not sure if, if Chris is still in the chat, uh, but Chris is, like, selling off a bunch of his old games. I think I talked about it last week, where he uh, has a sealed copy of a could could I can't say the Kudelka. name out loud cool Delka uh, for the PS1 is it cool Delka or is there only one L is is there an L before the D I thought it was cool Delka. Delka I don't know it's either whatever I, cool I, Delka I, or cool Delka I don't know Delka I don't, I don't know. remember either but he I mean he's cool Delka and he was asking me like oh where where should I like sell this stuff and I mean, I said, like, I guess eBay, but I haven't sold anything on eBay in probably more than 10 years. <laughs> like, I can't really even talk about, like, what the eBay experience is even like anymore for for the seller. I, I've helped my mom sell a bunch of stuff. And, uh, well, it, it's been a few years. And I've helped my dad sell some stuff, too. So, I mean, you think that I, I'm not sure if it's still like a, you know, like a, the, the best place to sell games. I don't know. Because uh, I know that if anything happens, like eBay, like 100 percent, like sides with the buyer, like every time. Mm. I think there there was an issue that arose uh, with something my mom was selling. Um trying to remember how it shook out um they the it, it, the the person raising the complaint was very sketchy for sure uh like i what we th think happened was that they threw away the package Mm -hmm. that had like a small piece still in it and they just didn't want to admit that they had thrown it away <laughs> on accident. Mm -hmm. So that they just didn't want to accept responsibility. Yeah. I see like Ricky Diamond says, uh, what not has it exploded? This is the time to sell on there before it gets too big. Um, I, I watched uh, I, I took a look Bob at from Retro RGB's stream yesterday 
where he uh, did, like, built a, uh, like, a Super Famicom in one of those new shells, mm. like, the, the smoke-colored shells, and then he gave it away, and then he sold a bunch of stuff, like, auctioned a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, that sounds kind of fun. I should go through, uh, you know, like, my closet and see if I have stuff that I should, like, just see if I could, put, like, sell on there. That'd be kind of fun. You know, I, I just had this experience with, I sold my first thing on Facebook Marketplace this week, and it, I didn't even sell anything. I just, like, <laughs> so I have a drop ceiling in the in the basement here, and I have these old tiles uh, that, you know, that were in here with the house, and, like, they're, they're perfectly fine. They just are constantly, like, you know, like white dust coming off of them. You know, and I've been slowly swapping them out with these other ones that are like, uh, like they almost like insulation, but they are um, like for soundproofing and stuff like that. So I've been slowly uh, getting rid of them, and I just been putting them in the garage. And I spent like two weeks trying to find the po proper way of disposing them. Because, I don't know, like, we, we, we compost, we, like, recycle, like, everything that we possibly can. And we're, like, you know, we just don't throw, like, things in the trash, like batteries or light bulbs. Like, we'll take them places if we can. So, I had this big stack of these ceiling tiles. And I called so many places. And like nobody's like everyone's like we don't we don't take those we don't take them like I I feel like they could just be like ground up into like like literally into dust. <laughs> but I spent like two weeks call I must have called like like twelve different places. And eventually, like the last person's like, you know, what you should do is you just like put them up on Facebook Marketplace and just like put them up for free and see if somebody will needs them. And it, like I did that, and. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone's like, yeah, I'll take them. I'll take the broken ones, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you know, she came by and loaded them in the back of her truck, and that was that. Like, it, it, it took, like, zero effort, like, once I did that. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I got a lot more, and I will slowly be swapping them out. So, like, I'll get back in touch with you if, you, <laughs> if you're still looking. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, the, these things, it doesn't do anything. Like, they're, uh, like, nothing comes off of these. And they're, like, very easy to to push up and move around and stuff and, like, slightly bend. But the old ones, you know, they're, like, Armstrong ceiling tiles. And, like, it's hard to say, like, exactly what they feel like. But they just, like, you know, like, little pieces of it, like, come off and... If you're, if you tried to like, if I needed to go in the ceiling for something like that, it'd just always be a mess. Uh, these new ones are, are much better. But I've been slowly, you know, like, they're, they're more expensive. So I've only been doing like a few at a time, like every like, you know, like four or five months or so. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, Fenris Wolf Retro. I'm going to be, I have a big bin of, like, parts that I still need to go through. And uh, I'm going to, I'll send you, like, all, like, the extra little pieces and stuff. Like, I have a lot of controllers that I pulled apart that, you know, I shot playing a B-roll of it. And, like, maybe you can use these extra, like, analog sticks or something like that. I'm like exploring. But I need way to do that. But I, I, that's going to really take like a few hours for me to do like one day. So I need to, I need to finish this other stuff, my other priorities first. I'll tell you what I have gotten into. I mean, mildly getting into. Uh, I got this idea from from Norm, the gaming historian, when I saw him at uh, 
um, yeah, Retro World Expo. I've been I've been bullet jour journaling, where it's like every day you make like a list of stuff, to like what you need to get done, and then you mark it off, and you like you know you put different levels of importance on things. And if you didn't, don't finish everything, then you like put a little mark on it and you carry it to the next day. It's you a like mark plan of out shame. like an entire week in advance, basically. And it's been nice. And you know, you can put like little uh, like little like reminders and stuff in there. You know, like you know how I said, oh, I'm gonna try and play like a new game, like you know, at least, like, every day if I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I do Have sometimes. you kept up with that? I've, I've, I've done decent. But I always, like, you know, I make a, a note in my journal, like, what I played that, like, what game I played that day. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's certain things that feel like they never go away. <laughs> like, the Mr. episode is like, Mr. Vid, Mr. Vid. <laughs> like, every day... You know, and like I, have, I like number one, two, and three, and then the rest of them get like bullets. But it is, um, you know, on the last last day of the week, like after you put out, like plan out the whole week. I just have a, a page for for like a brain dump, of like things that come to mind that I don't want to forget about. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's helped at all. Oh, there was a donation I had forgotten. Uh, one second. For oh, there was a, uh, a Streamlabs donation from Enchilada Backloggery. Oh. And it was five dollars. Thank you. I'm, I Thank hope you're you. still here. Saying, uh, do you remember try when we were kids? I showed you this game and you were so bored of it. Yeah. You cheered on the bad guys so I would lose. So we could play Mario Paint in times of good memories. Have fun. <laughs> yep, yep. You'd rather play Mario Paint. Yep. It, mu it must be it must be weird uh, for my old buddy Enchilada seeing me willingly play Final Fantasy IV. I mean, I I was I was so confused by the appeal of this game. He rented this in Final Fantasy VI. All, of course, we called them two and three at the time. You still do. Um, <laughs> we, uh, he ran them all the time and like, I, I would watch him play them. I'm just like, I really like the music and like the, the story is cool, but like, why do the enemies not move? Why do you not see the enemies before you fight them? Why don't you make contact with the, the why don't you make attack? contact with the enemy when you attack them? Like I, I don't under, I do not understand this. And, uh, I, I, I remember one time, uh, I think it was Final Fantasy VI. He was like, I need to go to the bathroom, get through this battle for me. I'm like, what, what do I do? And he hands over the control. He's like, just, just hit the A button. I'm like, okay, okay. And, uh, like, I, 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 I remembered that when I uh, played when Mario RPG came out and I was like so nervous. I'm like, cause I remember asking him, I was like, you know, Mario RPG was coming up. I'm like, man, this game looks awesome. You know, it's, it's, it's Mario, but it has like Donkey Kong country graphics. That's great. Um, but like, like what, what, what is it? What the heck does RPG mean? Like, what does that mean? And he said, I remember asking him, he's like, oh, I think that means it's like, it's like Final, I think that means it's like Final Fantasy. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's Mario, so I gotta, I gotta play it. I gotta get it. Uh, and uh, I, I just, that, that, that like experience when he went to the bathroom playing Final Fantasy VI and he's like, oh, just hit the A button. That was like all I knew to do when I was like starting up Mario RPG. I was like, okay, okay, I'm in battle. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to keep hitting the A button. And then I got all the way to 
uh, you know, there's the little sort of Bowser, the fake out Bowser fight at the beginning of that game. And, um, I, uh, I was like, kept attacking him. I'm like, it wasn't working. I'm like, wait, okay. Like I need to come up with a backup strategy here. And, uh, turns out like, Oh, I, I like hit the D pad. I'm like, Oh, I can move the cursor and I can hit the chain instead. And so like, it was, it was this very slow process of like wondering, figuring out like what the heck was even up with. I bet it took you a long time RPG. to beat that game. I mean, I've, you know, it's, I mean, sort of, I mean, I, I it was a rental at first. Um, I, 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 me and Enchilada beat it on a, on a sleepover. I, I, I stayed the night at his house and we finished it. Uh, but before, like, I owned my own copy of the game. Um, mm -hmm. So it really wasn't that long because, you know, I, I was playing it like. I remember. I think on my first rental, I got to Yeradovich, who has the. Uh, uh, what, what are these guys? Uh, who has the. Um, Fifth star, I think. Um, doesn't look like eyes. Um, I, I got that far, I think, on my first round. But like the first night I had the game, uh, I got, I think, to oh, what's his name, Basher or something like that. The dot, the or Croco, Croco, the. The, uh, the dinosaur, the, the thief dinosaur. There we go, fine. Um, I think I got that, which is, like, not very far into the game at all. But, you know, it was, it was sort of a slow figuring out, <laughs> you know? And, and, look, and look at me now, and I'm like, man, yeah, I could, you know, I, I could go for, like, a fifth or sixth run through Final Fantasy IV. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's interesting because in my mind for the longest time I was like oh Fantasy Star took me like a year to beat <laughs> I mean I was convinced that it took me a year to beat but when I step back and I really think about it it's like I got it for my birthday and I didn't play it like I didn't understand it and I didn't play it for months and I finished it in June so it really only took me like four months. But, you know, when you're 11, four months may as well be may as well be a year. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I wonder how many times I have played this. Because I've played, I would say I've played this Super Nintendo version. I've played through it at least twice, if not three times. I've played the PS1 version once. I've played the PSP version once. Um, I'm not even paying attention. Is, is Cecil even doing damage to this thing? Oh, okay, so I guess I really do need to use magic. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm doing what Brett always told me to do, mash A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't it? It's fire. Like, yeah, but Rydia doesn't have it. Actually, that 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 dark pathway is like actually a lot harder to see than I remembered. Looking, it shows up really well on on the stream. Yeah, but it's 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 a lot darker than I remembered. Um. But yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't play any other. I only played Fantasy Star 1, 2, and 3, and then then I got Lunar. I see. So Lunar was like... Wow, Lunar... So you didn't play anything but any RPGs but Fantasy Star until Lunar. Yeah. 
Interesting. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't much many RPGs like in general on console. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, then Lunar was really the one that opened up the gateway. It was the gateway, and then I bought you know I bought this from uh, I, I've talked about it many times on in the on stream before but i'll i always like bringing it up because oh this was such this fond memories from of, uh from that one store right yeah from from zappers zappers <laughs> uh zappers was awesome i mean it was i think it was zappers was like basically like a western new york place and i think that it may have been owned by video factory which is like i think is another like western new york like video chain uh, if you go on on uh, on YouTube, you can probably find Zappers commercials. Hmm. Oh, look at this! Oh, Nicholas Legacy thing. I traded my SNES for a Jaguar at Zappers. And 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 Nicholas Legacy grew up in Western New York. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, Zappers was amazing. I, I loved going to Zappers because you could go in the Zappers and pick any game in the entire store and pay 50 cents and you play it for an hour. Amazing. Oh, yeah, wow. and I, man, exactly. I would love to like see a store walkthrough because I have this, this memory of it looking like... I don't know, it's like it's, it's like real dark, like an arcade kind of, and everything like with with neon lights, every like all around all around it, and like if I if I had just had a time machine to like go back and like remember what Zappers like to see a Zappers, like I would, I would that'd be one of the things I do. <laughs> <laughs> I forget who said, yeah. but someone was asking. So try when you gonna get a, a new uh, new TV? I'm I'm my current plan is to uh to get um is is to get the, um, a c2 oled like pretty much as soon as they come out and i want to i want to review it like i want to i don't want to do a review of it just because i think that that would be relevant but something kind of different and i'm just really curious how well uh you know a video on you know, one of the TVs is going to be the thing that uh, people are going to be most looking at this year. Uh, I, I, I just think it'd be, I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, I recently have been, uh, I subscribed us to that, uh, like the HDTV, um, what is it, the, Oh, HD TV tests. Yeah, because he started doing like game stuff, and it's. I mean, I he. Pro I don't know if he has before, but he started doing like all this stuff about uh, about like HDR in like newer games. Like, oh, why is it doing this thing mm -hmm. with it? HD TV test is is kind of awesome. It's like it's a, a total. Uh, it's like a totally different mindset, I think. To like analyze like we like look at the HDR and it's like okay that's what it's doing and like I feel like he looks at the HDR and says like it's doing it wrong <laughs> yeah I, I watched a video he did about like PS5 calibration yeah but I I don't think it was it wasn't really like too much of a revelation because uh, mm -hmm. I was like oh well yeah that was how I was doing it pretty much there is, uh, hmm, this is, I assume, a heel. But it's, it's interesting because I think that it gives a different perspective, and I think that he can probably, if he focuses more on games like that, I think that it would do, it would be like, it would be such a different uh, it's not fight those things. approach to the kind of gaming uh, channels you'd see, or gaming coverage. I mean, it's essentially like Digital Foundry for TVs, mm -hmm. playing playing games. 
I forgot about how, like, you can't use, like, multiples in this game. Uh, I think you can if you hit L or R, I think. No, I mean, you can, you can hit, like, like, I'm, I'm not, like, you can, you can, are, are you talking about targeting multiple? I'm talking, like, if you wanted to use, like, multiple potions or multiple cure spells in the menu, I don't, I think you have to just do them one at a time. Because it goes back a screen. Yeah, I mean, he, he does not mention games very many times on the channel, but I think that w the times that he has, I, I went through the uh, comments, and it seems as though people were really into it. Alligator. It's a pretty good alligator. It is. I feel as though that would not be uh, called an alligator in new in new games. No. <laughs> Out of MP. Maybe I should give her the ice rod. Uh, so did you watch you watch Joe's Egret 2 video? I did. I watched like half of it, and you know it is it is interesting because he messaged me I think like early in the week because we were talking about not being able to show the the controllers, and I think that the way that it worked out is that the way that it's worded in the email of what we were allowed and not allowed to show made it seem like we were not allowed to show the controllers period but I think that maybe it's like a lack of commas <laughs> that made it oh. seem as though uh, or an extra comma saying you know the bottom of the, of the unit the controllers or comma the controllers comma something else so, you know, maybe I was I was allowed to show the controllers. I was going to show the bottom of the controllers. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, I it is what it is. <laughs> it always sort of was weird to me in this one. I don't think it matters until much later in the game. But like, you know, uh, some of these, I, I think it, there's at least a couple of games. I can't remember which ones aside from this, though. Some have the uh, whole thing with the the tents and the cabins. Like, tents don't recover all your HP and MP. Right. You need to like, have a cabin. Yeah, yeah. They really get a good night's sleep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy VI only has tents. Yeah, and I, I think started. That... I started with five and six. I, I forget. Does Chrono Trigger have tents too? I kind of think mm -hmm. it might. I don't know. I don't. Chrono Trigger just in general is pretty easy. So I mean, I don't remember it was my. Using it was like my first RPG that wasn't Mario RPG though. So. Yeah, oh no, I mean it's it's kind of easy, but in the best possible way. Like it's just it's just it's uh it's fun to play yeah. and easy to well, play. Well I mean, you know, this is I'm playing Final Fantasy for easy type right now, so Yeah, but you know what I call it I just call it Final Fantasy two. <laughs> I, I put that in the in the tweet when I was uh, advertising this stream. I says you're playing. You said you're playing Final Fantasy IV, or if you prefer, like I do, Final Fantasy II. Well, who who is the I there though? 
Well, I, I, I say that I say try is playing this, yeah. so I think that people would assume that it's me. The boss is the octopus. I mean, I know that it's not Final Fantasy II, but to me, it was Final Fantasy II. Yeah, but then how do you... I mean, the whole problem is, like, how do you refer to... Final Fantasy, actual Final Fantasy two, and actual Final Fantasy three. Like, well, they they don't really come up in conversation at all. I mean, if if I was in a conversation with somebody, I would say Final Fantasy four, just like as that was. Oh the, yeah, I uh, forgot that you sometimes drop money when you run in this one. Yeah, uh, 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 Ruben Ahmed says, says you know, FF2U or FF4J. I mean, I always said FF4J for the longest time. Yeah, that, that, that works. I mean, it doesn't work in, like, spoken conversation very well. Right, well, yeah, but I mean, I'm not having spoken conversations very often about <laughs> Final Fantasy 4 and 2. You know, uh, something I, I noticed was, um, when I was, when I took the photo for the, the thumbnail... It actually says like the the product number on it. Let me let me look at it again real quick. It's, I can yeah, but I got it. It's, it's, it's dark under there. I can't I can't see it. But it says like it says like F four something. Uh, I like I almost wondered if that was intentional. Uh, it says. SNS-F4-USA. Oh, cool. I'm like, I'm, is that is that F4 just like a total coincidence? Or, like, I have no idea if, like, are the product numbers just, like, sequential? Like, the order of officially licensed games? Or... Yeah. Like, I, I honestly do not know. This is the boss, isn't it? Up here... Where is Sandy? Uh, I don't know. She was up here, and then I, uh, I, I took her out right before the stream, and she hasn't come back up. Sandy, <laughs> Sandy! Oh my gosh! What is this? What? What is that? What? <laughs> what is that? Look! Oh, <laughs> look! I thought you were being like, hey. Come, come up here. Oh, so Final Fantasy 3 says SNS F6 USA. Oh, really? Is, is that true? Or are you just... That's what people are saying in the oh, chat. Oh, that's, that's kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. I'm up here. Oh. I was going to say, I, like, I wonder if Nelly will come down. There's the bell. I think, I think that I, I'm secretly Nelly's favorite. Yeah. You, I mean, you kind of predicted that. Yeah, but I, I think that she just likes how I get down on her level a lot. Mm -hmm. Do the kids I don't do pick that? her up and I don't like, you know, like the kids are always like holding her or doing whatever. And I just get lay down. Octomom. That's... I don't remember that being this thing's name at all. <laughs> Octo Man. Look at that face on there, dude. He's like, Whoa! I guess he's not multiple targets. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming Final Fantasy and is... NES says NES FF USA. Really? I I had I I never. <laughs> It, like, never occurred to me that, pro like, those, like, product numbers on carts might actually, like, mean something. Like, I never really look, looked closely at them at all. And that's that's kind of crazy, though. I mean, I, I learned something new every day, and that was, that was definitely a thing I learned today. So, <laughs> later on in this game, I think it's maybe when you go inside the... Uh, uh, inside the 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 giant, mm -hmm. the iron giant, 
or maybe it's inside the tower where you where you, where you fight uh so like like Dr. Lou Bay oh in, in his, yeah yeah in his, yeah in his, in, his, in his robot ball nab <laughs> is that the name? It's, it's, it's yeah his name is ball nab <laughs> <laughs> you gotta appreciate some of the, the original translation, you know? Yeah. You know, I actually... I mean, it's it's been so long since I, I played it, but... Uh, I, I... I thought the PS1 version of this was really good, to be honest. Like, it's... Like, I feel like people mostly say that it's as bad as the others' versions, but, like... It, they, that was they, the only one that didn't... Yeah, it was it was didn't have bad loading, right? Right, it didn't. But like most people act like it does. It's it's like because I've never, it was included with Chrono Trigger, which does, which does. Yes. Oh my gosh, Chr Chrono Trigger is the worst by far. I mean, Final Fantasy VI uh, PS One is not super great either. But and I, I mean, it, they definitely got progressively worse as they made them. I mean, in Japan, they all kind of came out sequentially over yeah. time, whereas we got them in these collections. Um, and, uh, it, so, but if you look at them, like when they were, uh, you know, made in order, uh, you know, they, they definitely get worse over time. And I, I don't know if that's just because the games are more complicated and, Therefore, like there was just more data to load. I, I don't, I don't know what the deal was. So, uh, Fenris Wolf, Wolf Retro is saying F, uh, FF2 SNES translation is infamous for being translated by someone who barely spoke English. Uh, Ted Woolsey came in late and was only able to proofread it quickly. Uh... See, I never felt that this game had a bad translation. I mean, this the translation in this is significantly better than like Breath of Fire 2. Like by a lot. <laughs> Breath of Fire 2 is nonsense basically. Yeah, I mean you know, this is I mean, I've always thought that this game had an effective story. Uh yeah. even oh, it, even it though I like mean, I this is the version I've mostly played. Oh, that's a, I forgot about that. Like you're just like walking along the world map. And then there's just suddenly like mode seven zoom out out of nowhere. Yeah. Just like carpet bomb in that place. Look at that. It's like, geez. Um, there's $5 from theater of pain. Thank you. Thank you. Saying, uh, gotta go to Funko Land once a week, right? Oh, yeah. Just got a Retro Tank 5X because of you guys. It's too bad you can't go to Funko Land. I know. That, I mean, I don't know how often I went, but man, I got, I got a lot of games there. I mean, <laughs> my copy of this came from there. Here it comes. Here it comes. You swindler! You spooty bard! <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that line has been kept in like all of the subsequent translations. Well, it's it's iconic now. Yeah. Right? I mean, do, does it even does it even mean anything? Like. Does Spoony mean anything? Uh, I feel as though it probably did at one point. <laughs> it's a mistranslation of Stupid Bastard. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I mean, I guess that fits, right? Fits with uh, Nintendo at the time. Tell a left. 
it's, you're making good progress. You know, you think about it, and you're like a little bit over an hour into it. And like people have come it's, and it's, gone. It's pretty, good, pretty good pacing. I mean, you are constantly moving along. I mean, and that last dungeon was a little longer, but I could have got quicker. But I, I wanted to get the treasure chests. And the game is not hard for the longest time. I, I, I feel that the first time I really hit uh, like a, a kind of a point where I was like stuck for a little bit was like, what is it? The Cal, the Calbrena, the dancing Calbrenca like or something like that. I think. They yeah. Call it. Like there was that. And then I didn't have any problems again until like I had to fight like that, that wall. Yeah. 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 You know, the, the Calbrenca, I think that's like, that that's like not a great place to get stuck because it's like right at the beginning of the underworld. And I'm not sure if you like can really get out. I want to make sure there's no like hidden treasure chests here. Can you like get out there? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like can you get out and grind if you're stuck there. I, I, I don't remember. Uh, so it's a, it's a Cal, Cal, Calcabrina. Calcabrina? Oh, I don't know. There's people. Uh, there's $5 from uh, BW. Thank you. The, he puts the, the BW in, in, in the Buffalo Wild. He puts the Buffalo Wild in the Buffalo Bu- Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, $5. Thank you. Saying, I remember coming home from school. And mom had rented Final Fantasy 2 and trying to play it. I was a few years too young to get into RPGs. I couldn't figure it out <laughs> either. I mean, it's... I think that if you didn't have an older sibling also, like that is, like made things even more challenging. And yet this was just like, you know, I'm going to check these open treasure chests just in case. Um, the... The, the, you know, it's such a difference in like J- Japan. Like that's, you know, that was like the everyday childhood game was yeah these types of RPGs. Uh, Breath of Fire One translation was fine. Yeah, I mean that that was. That will always remain one of the weirdest things to me. That that Square translated and released Breath of Fire One. I don't even remember what scene does. It is such a weird thing, and I would love to know (laughs) the real story behind why they decided to release, translate, and release somebody else's game instead of just doing one of the many games that they already. Excuse me one of the many that they already had themselves. Yeah, but then we might have not gotten it at all, I guess. I guess, but... I don't know. It's, it's, it is just a weird thing. So am I supposed to go to the Antlion Cave now, I think? I assume? Because I don't, I don't have... You walk around the outside, there's a door. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah can... I did. I did notice that, but I I thought thought it was like you know the treasure chest behind the shopkeepers. Uh, when did it come out? I think it came out ninety four. I mean, it was before. Uh, um, it was before Final Fantasy three. Oh, the bow has to be for... uh, Uh, Here's a theory. What if Capcom approached Square for publishing to use their brand recognition for their RPG? Um... I... uh, I don't know, because RPGs still weren't even that big. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting to think how... Like, I wonder 
if younger people have the association of Square Enix with RPGs that we do, because like, it, it's not entirely true that they only made RPGs, but it was, you know, basically RPGs. I mean, that was like, that was what they specialized in, like both Square and Enix separately. And yeah, that was. Well, it was what? a big deal at the time it, where they were competitors. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to, you know. Right. And it's going to do better. Is the next Final Fantasy going to do better than, than Dragon, Dragon Quest. Quest? But it's like, it's not even. Uh, like. Like, I don't know. It was almost like you had to be like an RPG specialist to even make them. To even yeah. make a good. That's not word. That's the way to Fabul, isn't it? Mount Hobbs. Yeah, this is the way to Fabul. Fabul. You know, I, I've got like a, I've got this like, I don't know. Am I, am I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's actually a uniquely hand drawn. Cause I mean, there was a bunch of them. I don't know if they like draw each one by hand mm -hmm. or if they're like just photocopies, but um, I've, I've got, I bought it at the Renaissance fair. I bought a Final Fantasy four world map and a Final Fantasy six world map. And I have them framed on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like, if, if I had, a, <laughs> if we could do like an obscure, obscure documentary subject, it would be the untold story of the uh of how the squaresoft published translated and published breath of fire for capcom <laughs> i mean i bet it's i bet it's interesting i bet it is actually it's probably i mean not. is there it's is there any information not. out there of like what really happened i mean, I, mean I i i think it out. i think you know i i i uh, you know a documentary idea i've absolutely had is ted Woolsey. Like, I think he would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we've talked about that, right? Yeah. That would be like one that we would love to do. Like, I, I, I actually looked into like how I might could get in contact with him, but I can't remember if I actually reached out or not. Supposedly it's because Capcom had little experience translating RPGs, so they asked Square for help. I'm well, not sure how true that is. I, I mean, <laughs> they have. They certainly didn't learn anything when they like did two on their own. Then, yeah. Well, I mean, the the, <laughs> the funny thing is really that you know Capcom was so infamous at the time for these text boxes that were so small and the font was so big and there was like seven words in the text box, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I remember especially in, like, the, the GBA era, I remember Capcom being heavily criticized for that. Hmm. Wait, Squaresoft published Breath of Fire in Japan as well? Did they? For real? That sounds... That's hard to believe. I've never played. I have it, but I've never played Mystic Quest. You've n you've never, like you've never even like powered it on. I I powered it on, but I've never played it for more than ten minutes. You know that that's that's a how game. long is it? If it is it like under ten hours? I think so. Yeah, it's like ten-ish hours probably. Really? Yeah, it's not long. Should I? I should play it. You should. You should stream it. Well, I want to be able to read, read it. Oh well, yeah, that's true. Don't you only get two party characters or something? You only it? have two party members at a time in it, which is like, like that was like, you know, I mean, it might seem silly to some people, but like that was, I always thought that was kind of neat about Final Fantasy, uh, uh, 
uh, 13. I was, you know, like for like half of the game, you're mostly uh, dealing with like two person parties. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. I just, I, I thought I was like, oh, that like, it's, it's a different dynamic than what you normally are dealing with. Right. I yeah. thought it was interesting. Um, but yeah. You mostly only have two party members. I mean, you know, that, it was widely disliked at the time, but you know, my, my, my friend enchilada, he had it. Um, mm-hmm. and he, he tried to get me to play, play it once. And I, yeah, cause that, but, like I mean, that was jazz. why he wanted me to play it. He's like, I want you to understand Final Fantasy. Like, I yeah, want you to understand this it's meant to be right. It's, it, it's exactly what it was meant to be. So like he was, he was, he was doing, you know, the exact thing that, you know, square envisioned. He was like, you know, here, like, here's like, this is supposed to be a starter RPG. Like, you know, and so one time he, uh, he had me play it. And, uh, I, I think I beat like the first boss in it or something. I, I believe this was before. Well, I don't know. I can't remember if it was before or after Mario RPG that, that we did that, but, you know, I got the game years. Ago. It's a game that a lot of people, um, a, a, a lot of people, I think, generally look back fondly on it now. Like it, yeah. you know, it was always like, I, I think people were insulted by it, really. <laughs> but now people are like, oh, you know, you know, it's actually pretty cool. People like the music in it a lot. I mean, it's not, it's not Oimatsu. Um, all right, so I, there is a five dollars from Container Seven. Thank you. Thank you. With with no message. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is a five dollars from Scott D. Thank you. Thank you. Saying, hey guys, I just ordered an IPS kit for the Game Boy Pocket I was given recently. Uh, any Game Boy game re- recommendations? I love Final Fantasy too. You should get the Final Fantasy Legend games. Uh, wait, are we talking Game Boy or GBA? Uh, Game Boy Pocket, so just regular Game Boy. Oh, Game, Game Boy Pocket, Bi- yeah. Get, I mean, Bi- get Bionic Commando, Yeah, for fun. sure. Yeah, Bionic Commando, oh, amazing. Um, uh, yeah, um. Uh, I mean, I, I really like Warrior Land 1 a lot. Kirby Street Mine 1 and 2 are good. Um, I mean, I, I always like to tell people like, oh, uh, go to, go to my backloggery and look at my yeah. Game Boy games. Uh, Bat- Batman Revenge of the Joker. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, how about, uh, I don't know if you looked at the footage I gave you and I don't, I'm not sure if that has any, it has any interest to you, but the, uh, the skater died bad and bad and rad. Isn't that, is that, isn't that a Tom Dubois cover game? Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of a cool it's kind of a cool game, I think. It has I think it only has four levels. I should stream that sometime. It's like a action game action skateboarding game. Uh let's see here. There was a dollar ninety nine from uh uh Jepin Kandile. I'm saying that right. Thank you. Thank you. Saying I currently play this for the first time, 20 hours in. Ooh. You gotta be close to the end. I mean, you saw my my save game was 19 hours and 19 minutes. See, I I think I was. I I, I was. Which seems like a perfect length for an RPG. I think I was like 30 plus hours my first time. But really? it's also it's also very likely, you know, that it was it was sitting there with the clock running sometimes, because yeah. I I don't know if it applies in this game. Like in a in some Final Fantasy games, like if you pause in battle like this, mm-hmm. like because you can't pause anywhere else in most of these earlier games. In fact, I I want to say like maybe you can pause like in like outside of battle in like nine maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But like I, that's like the only way to like stop the clock in some of these games. I think. Uh, and I'm not sure if it I, I think this, this is the one. first game I ever played where it it kept track of your time. Oh, do uh, Fancy Star games not do that? No, none of them did. And I, like neither, neither did Lunar, and I, I this is the first one I ever remember playing. And I think that I, I remember this game took me a week to beat, and it was it was middle of the summer, and I remember it, it rained almost the entire time. Hmm. So, like, it gave me an excuse. Although it did not rain the day that I bought it, because I remember buying it, and I, you know, I, I bought the used copy. And normally, I would uh, rush home and play it. But I said, you know, I'm not going to go home. I'm not going to play it right away. I don't, I don't know why I felt like this was a priority at the time. But I said, I'm going to I'm not going to play it until later on. What? Like, you're like, I'm going to be a good boy and do my homework. No, no. I mean, it was it was a week. It was, oh, it was the middle of summer. I think I, I think I played outside for a while first. <laughs> I finished it in a week, but it, like I said, it, it it was it was it rained almost all week. But I, rem, I I can remember how it felt. You know, I can remember like specifically the the having my windows open. And, you know, like it just raining out and, you know, my, the back of the house never had the rain come in through the windows because it was back of the house and there was woods and stuff behind it. So it never like blew in or anything like that. But I just remember the sound of that the sound of the, uh, the, the rain outside. I'm just trying to figure out, get my bearings here, because there's, there's a, huh. uh, there was, oh, S Scott Snyder has been a member for 20 months. Get there right That's now. amazing. Twenty months. Wow. Uh, Scott says uh, I plan to build a PC to stream console games with. Any recommendations for an entry level setup? I won't be playing PC games on it. You guys are awesome. You know, I got. I mean, yeah, you did something like similar, right? Yeah, I mean, my my primary purpose was to build a computer that was good enough to encode uh, 4K 60. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it was not good enough to encode 4K60 losslessly in, in the digital foundry uh, frame rate analysis style. Uh, but it's good enough for like, you know, making like H.264 versions of it at least. Um, I could do it with 1080p though. I could I could do frame rate analysis at 1080p, but I couldn't do it. I do. I had to bring my editing computer downstairs to record that. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, if you're not doing anything super crazy, um, so I got, oh, what is it? Is it 1650 super? Yeah. Um, uh, which was the first, it was the first like entry level card that had like the there's other 15 other 1650s. But they don't have the the more up to date uh, cores that have uh, accelerated uh, NVENC encoding on them. Right. Oh wait, this is this is the boss, isn't it? Okay. I, I, yeah. I think but, I need to go like, save you know what? Another thing you might want to look into. But anyway, I got that, and I got like a very like mid range Ryzen five. Like, you know, yeah. just very mid range. So it was, it was definitely a bit of a budget build. Uh, it does not like emulate super amazingly. Like I did actually, uh, actually, I think the GameCube stuff, like the dolphin stuff in, uh, analog frontiers part three actually was recorded on it, but it was, it was struggling. I, I had to do, I, you know, I had to, I had to work to get some decent settings. Um, so, but like, if you're just looking for, you know, whenever you see me streaming downstairs, that's the computer I'm using. 
Um, what you might want to uh, look into, I'm not sure now that they're becoming more, like much easier to get, is to look on eBay for people selling like good computers without GPUs in them. Oh. Like, 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 like as a we're doing that, like or... buying these systems to uh, get the get you know like the RTX 3080s out of them, and then they just like sell the computer. Oh wow! So it was. I mean, there's been some good deals and stuff, but it feels like they're they're drying up now that that uh, they're becoming more and more common and easier to get. So that might be something to look into, and you can probably I bet you could find something for like without a GPU in it, if you could just get, like, a cheap GPU then. Uh, you know, like, maybe, like, 300 bucks or something like that for, like, a, a fairly decent computer. Uh, so, Paul Bergkamp was asking a very serious question, saying, uh, Corey, do you have a gaming drink? <laughs> All my friends had different drinks, soda, coffee, etc., uh, I mainly drink water when gaming. <laughs> I also mainly drink water when gaming. Yeah. <laughs> Although, you know, like, I'll tell you, you know, my, my like, playing games and having my morning coffee, it is, it is better, it is, it is hard to think of a better, like, like, everything is just right in the world <laughs> when that's happening. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I tell, I tell my wife, you know, and I think she feels the same way. I'm like, you know, when I have my when I have my first cup of coffee in the morning, it's the best time, best best part of my day. <laughs> it is like literally, I go to bed at night because I am excited to like get up and have my first cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing that you know that gets me gets me out of bed every single day. You know those stupid old the Folgers crystals commercial uh -huh. where it's like the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup and like literally that is the best part of my day I you know you when I when I was <laughs> when I was a, a kid a little kid those commercials confused me so so much because I I thought I said the I, I thought I said the best part of waking up is soldiers in your cup and I'm like <laughs> that sounds horrifying It's the, uh, you ever see the old uh, SNL skit where it's like Chris Farley and they, they give him, like they tell him that the coffee he's drinking is another brand and he like goes crazy. No, I don't think I've seen this. Oh my God. It's, it's so good. It is so good. Yeah, I, I could probably, maybe I should make a Folger, like a film of Folger's, uh, uh, commercial, but th it's 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 it is the highlight of my day. You know the ant lion design in this game is not great. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the uh, the the Chris Farley Folgers crystals. You know they're drinking decaffeinated coffee crystals. He's like what? And then he tells him again, and he's like, he's like out to dinner, like with his with his wife or whatever. Chris Farley is his character, and he gets all serious, and the music like <laughs> kicks in, and he's like, "You son of a bitch!" <laughs> he gets like so angry about it, and it's so funny. He ends up like trashing the whole restaurant. <laughs> oh wow, Chocobo is like super strong. I probably should have been like using that. Uh, so. Like I used, to, I, I, we get this uh, uh, espresso, like delivered every every month. It's the uh, what is it? Um, the 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 knee knee buckling espresso uh, from knee buckling. That sounds knee buckling espresso espresso. I'm, Does from, does Edward uh, get from Stone Street? If he's like, okay, Edward gained a level. I was I was curious if he gets an experience if he's hiding. Uh, and <laughs> when we run out, we, we we used to like 
make it through a month, right? With with the uh, like the um, was it like the the pound bag, and then we started not making it through the month. And every time, like we get it uh, like a like a subscription to it, like through Amazon, so they send it like on a certain day every month. And it like ended up becoming this really stressful thing. It's like I don't know if we're gonna make this last until until we get our next shipment. So we like upped it to two bags <laughs> every month just in case. <laughs> uh, but you know, I used to just drink a black for yeah. the longest time. Uh, I, yeah, but it I'm seems like during like hear. during during quarantine. Um. Yeah, my wife and I have kind of gotten into a little bit into like adding some of the uh, like the coffee, like some some sugar free, like coffee mate to it, sugar free or like fat free, like whichever, like sugar free preferably. Uh, but they have like a like a cinnamon roll kind, and it is like it's. I mean, it's like, I I can't I cannot even describe it. <laughs> But for the longest time, I just drank coffee black. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I remember uh, when you were here one time. I think I, like, I went to pick something up and you stayed here, and you told me to like pick you, like since I didn't have coffee you- here, uh, uh, I. Uh, you asked me to pick pick up a cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. <laughs> and I can't remember if you, like, told me yet that, like, oh, you, you know, you take it black. Yeah, drink, drink, drink it black. And I, I think I'm, because I, I was just like, oh, I guess people cream and sugar, sure, I guess. I, I can't remember if I ordered it wrong or if you told me ahead of time. But at some point in that process, <laughs> I learned... But, but now apparently that's no longer true. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, still, do you do I, you still enjoy it? Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> like I don't I don't know if uh, if I mean, if I, Mike Mizzle is making fun of me or what or if, or or if, if they can relate, saying I can't wait to go to bed to get up to drink coffee. <laughs> I, I'm, what can I say? I mean, it's I, it's the best part of my day, and I think that having that cup of coffee the next day is like what gets me through the current day. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wish, uh, I wish I liked coffee that I, I, I wish, <laughs> I, I mean, I wish I liked anything I ate or drank that much, I guess. I mean, I, I like eating a whole lot, but I, I don't know. It sounds like this coffee's on another level. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's, it's the story of my life and it's, <laughs> I mean, I'm the person that, you know, I, I always like to say that when I'm in a hotel room and, you know, if it's a hotel, you, you know, I, you, usually they have a coffee maker. I, I'm sure I've told this before, but like, OK, I'm waking up in the morning and I smell this smell and I'm like trying to decide whether this smells like someone's brewing coffee or whether someone just took a really big dump. <laughs> like this is what this is uh, well, i mean this is what coffee smells like to me okay you haven't even smelled the right kind of coffee then <laughs> i don't i just i just like it and i guess i guess that you know like during like you know so much time like at home, it just it became a really important thing for me. I mean, when I lived in New York, I wouldn't have coffee until I got to work. But then, then I'd always have a couple of cups there. But it was me and like three other video people. I think that I mean we're all video people, but. Uh, it was like um, me, like the other, like the head guy of like the, the the graphics division, and like one of the like the main assistant editors, like the, like the like the the uh, the tape to tape assistant editor. 
where like the, we had the coffee club and we bring coffee every uh, every month. I, I, uh, I am Scotter one hundred and forty has been a member for seventeen months. Wow. I'm having the hardest yeah. time finding my way out of this dungeon. <laughs> uh, Scotter140 says, uh, How do you make your espresso? I tried it a bunch of ways, but never made any at home. I was happy with Agreed. Coffee time is my happy place. Uh, so, I don't know. Like, we just... We, do, we don't do it, like, true... Like, a true way. I mean, we just have... Just we, we we have a Keurig. What can I say? Like we don't use the pods, but we like put the uh, the coffee into like we bought like reusable pods, and it's just you know it just it it doesn't take a long time. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people that would like look down like probably do look down on on that approach and and are probably thinking that it invalidated like everything that I've said previously. <laughs> like you don't really love coffee. You're not a true yeah. coffee lover. If you you're, have you're not, you're not doing that, but you know, what, what can I say? Like it's, it's easy to get up and just, just do that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, 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 if I, If I, if, if I had the time, it's just like like taking, like making my own espresso, like and like you know using the uh, the thing you push down the top on it. Like that's just not what I feel like doing at 5 a.m. <laughs> like you know when when I usually get up is like at 5 a.m. and that's like that's not what I feel like doing. So what, what can I say? Uh, there's ten dollars from uh, Return to Orc Monk. <laughs> Orc Monk. Thank you. Say nothing wakes me up like having a good pour over. I could be a walking zombie when I start, and I'll be awake and happy about four minutes later when I take my first sip. It's true. It's true. It's it's yeah. It's it it just it it changes your entire morning. I, I've I've entire never day. found caffeine to have any meaningful effect on. Well, it, it really comes down to just like how tired you are, I guess. I will say that coffee has become even more valuable in my life since since kids have arrived in my life. I mean, I don't. And it's don't like that's it's an important, like, just part of survival. <laughs> As long as you're using the reusable pods exclusively, which means you're putting fresher coffee into it, then you're fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I empty them out in between. That's what, if that's what you mean. And we we compost the uh, the old grounds. We got this free composting bin, and this thing is, like, gigantic. Mm -mm. Like, we had a little one for the longest time and it was constantly just like over like full and there's a place around here that if you sign up for something they give you a free composting bin and this thing is like it's like it's like a you, you gotta like dig a hole and it's like a hat that goes over the ground <laughs> huh. oh not not to change the subject off of coffee but uh why don't you tell us about your chair? You were talking about getting your a new yeah, chair. Yeah, yeah, well, I can. I'll talk about my chair just after I read uh, this two dollars from from Phenonymous, saying a uh, stovetop mocha. If you're on a budget, Rensilo. If not, no, I'm not familiar. Uh, there's also uh, two more dollars from Return to Orc Monk, saying it's not the caffeine try, it's the coffee. Yeah, it's it, like the caffeine. Like I like the caf caffeine aspect is like secondary. It's just the, hmm. it's like 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 the moment, the moments of sitting there and having your coffee and feeling like this is like all I need to do right now. 
for even for even just a moment. You know, even just like for five minutes. You just like you just have that moment. <laughs> Uh, there's uh, two pounds from JL. Thank you. Saying ever had a flat white? I'm not. I'm not familiar. <laughs> oh, you, uh, phenomenal! Sent a super chat earlier. Uh, I can. Uh, let me scroll back, back here. Oh, oh! I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Sorry about that. Uh, saying, evening, bros. You talk about that egret deuce. Uh, I mean, we did last week. Uh, it's I didn't I didn't uh, put it out like pull it up like make a comparison next to the uh, Astro City Mini, and I didn't realize it was so much bigger. Uh, okay, so I I, I got this chair. I got a, uh, decided to like buy this, um, the steel case gesture chair without a headrest. I bought it off somebody on, on Marketplace. And it's taken me a little while to get used to it, but I, I feel as though I'm starting to get a, a real handle on it. I don't mind not having a headrest. Uh, I like I like that it has like these movable arms. I wish that you could tighten them up though. I feel like they go in and out like really really easily. Hmm. And as far as I know, there's not a way to like tighten up, tighten it up. I don't know. I, we we talked about it a, a couple of weeks ago where you know like I I bought this used, but it was basically new. And I just decided that you know, I spent so much time in a uh, in a chair that I'm going to going to spend this money and I'm going to have this chair for probably 15 plus years. Yeah. I do. I just wish that these were uh you can make these a little tighter so they didn't move so much. You know, I've, I've always appreciated the idea of Rosa as, as a white mage with a bow. And I, I don't know why that's not really been like a defined role since. But what I will say is that is exactly how I play Final Fantasy 12. Uh, because, like, I mean, it's sort of a weird aspect to the gameplay, but, like, when you're moving around, you recover MP faster. So mm -hmm. I always directly... The, the, con the character that I always, like, take direct control over is the character that I make my primary healer so that I can continue moving around the battlefield manually to keep MP up. And, uh, uh, so, uh, I, I always equip them with a ranged weapon, just like Rosa. So. Interesting. Because, you know, that way I can keep, I can, I can attack, but their, their primary function is to heal. But I can't. But isn't attack. it like don't you have to buy the the bows like separately? What in this game? Or not, I mean, you have to buy the arrows separately in Final Fantasy Twelve. No, in this one. Yeah, but it's just it's just a, it's it's you you don't uh, buy a quantity of arrow. It's just it's just a different type of arrow that like modifies your damage. Oh. And if you, I, th I forget what aim does exactly, but it's free. I, I think it's either higher accuracy or higher damage. Like right now, I she's like. I feel as though I did not uh, get a bow for her. I, well, I she know, starts it, with a bow. It's one of these where you had to buy the, 
arrows. Like, well, like look how much damage she's doing. Like, I know compared to Cecil. I mean, she's. Like, I know that. Like, I've. I made a mistake. I mean, she could yeah. be doing equal damage from the back row as well, but I think between Rydia and Edward, I think she's got the, the best defense. Is this Mount Ordeals already? No, this is uh, Mount Hobbs. Oh. Mount Ordeals is from the Sidia. Right. The, but we're on the way to Fabul right now. To get Yang. Yep. I mean, that's not why we're going there. But... Actually, I, I guess I could look into equipping. And I, I think I have an extra bow and I have extra arrows, so I could look into seeing if uh, I could equip another character with a bow. Lit is not good there. Thanks for hanging out, BW. Do you know of any skips or glitches? No. Have you ever used any skips or glitches in a game? Ever? Um, I mean... I mean, a big part of the have fun... You ever, have you ever played... A game in in se that you knew you could sequence break and you sequence breaked it broke it. Yeah, I mean, sort of. I mean, it... can she use bows? Yeah, she can. The only time I've ever uh sequence broke was Metroid Prime, I think, where I got the you can get the space jump real early in the in the first pressing of the game. Oh, there's Yang. He must be a karate fighter of Fabul. <laughs> Achoo! <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Um, oh, the what? I mean, I don't know if I would call this really sequence breaking, but like something that I have enjoyed doing at times is like one time when like I, I've done things like definitely I've done this not green of time. I think I've, I might've done it at some point in, in a link to the past. Ah, uh, mom bomb. Uh, Where I'm, I'm trying to think here, how, how to explain it. Like I went into the dungeons and got the items mm -hmm. and then left and got like, did the dun like actually beat the dungeons in reverse order. Oh, that's kind of fun though. Yeah. So I don't know if you'd call that sequence breaking. Cause like I had, the, I had everything you needed to pr proceed. It's just that you normally wouldn't do things that way. You know? Yeah. That's kind of... That's that's fun. Yeah. And, I, and obviously Majora's Mask to... Um, in order to do uh, that, that single cycle beat that I did, I had to do a little bit of that as well. Like, I had to go into the first two dungeons, get their items and leave and then finish them later or else I wouldn't have been able to get Epona on uh, day one. Yeah. Uh, at which, again, I'm pretty sure you can get into the Great Bay without Epona. But, like, I did everything in that without, like, an actual glitch. I, the boss theme in this game is so good. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, it's it's well, my... what's like what I like about it is that sometimes, like, there's a whole other portion of the song that you might not even ever hear. I mean, I guess you'd have to. Most of the time, you'll hear it, but it has a like a, a really like a long long build up to it. I mean, th this is this is my 
definitely my favorite boss theme in the series. Part of that, I would say, comes from, uh, you know, it's it's in Mario RPG. But I had heard it previously, uh, you know, watching my friend play the game. But my memory was that that was like the regular battle theme. So when I got into a battle in this game and it didn't play that song, I was like kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. And so like, I think because of that experience, I've never really considered the regular battle theme in this to be one of my favorites. Just like you were disappointed with, you know, going to Hyrule Field and Ocarina of Time, right? Uh, I was like, oh. Like the the regular battle theme in this is okay. But like Mm -hmm. the... The boss theme is so much better. Like, it's such, such a good boss theme. In fact, I want to say this might be the only boss theme that starts with a dun 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 There's seven dollars from Mega X6. Thank you. Saying, it's great to see this game being streamed. I completed FF2 PR for the first time and loved it. Now I need to play FF3. Oh, Pixel Remaster. Oh, oh. Now I need to play FF3 for the first time. Mm. I hope that those get yeah. a console release. I, I, I hope so, too. I mean, uh, you know, I when I look at those, like, I have mixed feelings about how they look. Um, but, like, I think they generally look okay, but I guess my... My issue is kind of just like, I feel like the battlefields or really, I, I, I mean, these games are, are made for four three. And when you stretch them out to widescreen, I feel like something is kind of lost. Uh, I mean, it's not, they're not stretched to widescreen. I mean, it's, it's an expanded field, but like, I feel like the boss arenas look so empty. Mm-hmm. Like, like, as it is, there's, like, space between the enemies and the characters. But it's, like, so much. Something that I've never really had a solid handle on, and I think the behavior might vary from game to game. Oh, wait. Rosa just... Why Why did she just punch? D- are the arrows consumable? I didn't... I didn't think I'm pretty they, sure they are in this one. That's why I didn't go with them. I didn't think... Oh, yeah... There's a dollar ninety nine from Retro Dream. Oh, I see. I've got fifty iron arrows. Okay, you're right. You're right. I I forgot. Retro Dream says I cannot possibly explain how much I love you guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and it's thank you. It's like it's. I. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Something I've never really had a good grasp on though is, like. I think there is sometimes like a benefit for not equipping any weapon onto a monk. And I don't like, but like you also get benefit from, from equipping a, you know, a claw. But I don't know if that applies to this game, Final Fantasy 1, what other games it might apply to. Like, how do you make the choice between unequipped and uh, and claw? I That's something I've never had a solid grasp on. Like, I, I there are definitely times, I think, where being totally unequipped can be good. Um, I it, it was actually very clear in... Uh, Bravely Default 2. Like I really liked the monk class in that game because mm. you, you you could you could do some pretty cool stuff if you if you left your character unequipped uh, and you had some skills that uh, uh, made that work pretty nicely. But you know when I think of of this game, like <laughs> you know. My biggest issue I had with Bravely Default 2 was, like, just how much time it took for stuff to happen. Like, you look at all the stuff that has already happened over the course of this game. Like, I just kept thinking, like, 
you know, this game basically wants to be an homage to Super Nintendo RPGs, right? And it it's like it takes like the like the length of time that you could beat this game, you've been to like two cities and bravely default to. <laughs> <laughs> like it's kind of silly <laughs> jeez whoa retro dream <laughs> retro, dream. <laughs> retro dream what is what is oh my goodness what have what have you done but clearly I could have made more of an effort you get <laughs> yeah yeah eyes are so amazing and I'm so sorry but no 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 you don't need to, you don't need to do anything <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to do anything <laughs> thank you thank you thank jeez you. That, that, I guess Dang. that's one that's one way to your your to, your, your to uh, say... dreamcast swirl is more than enough <laughs> well thank you wow thank you very much <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> I, I, hopefully, saying, you know, uh, I always feel guilty yeah, when when stuff like this happens and it's been like so long since the video has actually come out. So hopefully the, the sheer magnitude of the Mr. Video will, will make up for this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bergen says, Retro Dream is living the dream. Even Sandy knows. <laughs> Uh, you know what we didn't talk about is uh, uh, Chocobo GP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I feel like you might have more to say than I do, because, like, I mean, I, like, booted it up, booted up the, the free version, because, like, you were you were talking about it, and, like, well, Dave streamed it, and I, I, I caught, like, five minutes of his stream. I wanted to see more of it, but I, I didn't get a chance to see much of it. Um, it's, it seems confusing. So, so, I mean, just say straight up, you know, I had pre-ordered and, you know, it, it is shipped. I pre-ordered, I mean, I, you know, I was, it was very much the sort of thing where it's like, I have no idea if this is going to be good or not. It's like, it's like, it was very 50, 50, if this was going to be good or, or not. Um, and I pre-ordered on Amazon UK, a physical version, just because that's what I do, you know. There's a physical version, and I, it's like, I gotta have it. Um, of, you know, especially a Final Fantasy type thing. Um, I, I like the first Joker by Racing a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, so, but, it, 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 like, it seems like the, the, the value of a physical copy is somewhat dubious due to, you know, these seasons and stuff. Like, there's stuff you can... I, I don't know if you're, it's real stuff that is equivalent to real money or if it's stuff that's not equivalent to real money. There's, like, certain, like, stickers or something that you can buy that, like, when the season's over, they're, they're just, like, gone. Yeah. But then... It is... So, like, like the it microtransactions like, in it, just to kind of put it out there, the microtransactions are, like, out of control. Like, it is, it is a complete mess. I mean, there is a free version... And you can buy a, like a fifty dollar version, and basically, the fifty dollar version gives you a pass to pay more money to buy other stuff. Right. So that's why I was trying to figure out, like, what, like, I guess I'll see when I get my when my physical arrives. Uh, like, like, it. Do you start with? Do you actually have like more free content? Or do you just like buy the buy permission to give them more money? Yeah, this is like oh you it's, can't it's you like, can't buy it's, this it's on crazy. the free version. And there's like four different kinds of of like currency, and and it's basically you know like a, like a hundred mithril for like is one dollar. I, I think I think I think mithril is the only currency that is equivalent to real money. But can yes. can you earn mithril like in playing the game? Can you? No, I don't. I don't think you can earn more mithril in the game. I don't think it's possible. 
But I, I, I played like four random races online. That's all I've done. But you only, you can only play like two or three characters, I think. I think you can play as Chocobo, White Mage, and the Behemoth. Yes. It, it's it's but the thing is is like I just uh, you get get the get the get the light version, and I I feel as though the the store and like buying things is set up in such a way that you kind of just have no idea how to navigate it, and you're spending money on things you you don't aren't even completely sure of what they're doing. Like I, 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 it, it, it feels as though it's, it's designed to perf purposely confuse and deceive you. That's crazy. And it is, I, I, I cannot stress enough that I'm not sure how much blowback there has been on it, but I haven't seen like a lot. And I think that there should be a lot more than there is, because I like I'll be interested to see if if your physical copy like even has anything in it, because it's mainly multiplayer focus anyways. It's all about just like playing these grind grinding up grinding up these currencies so you can unlock more stuff. Yeah, but I, like, can you even just like race the tracks like on your own? Like well, even there's a story like, just mode. There's a story mode at least, but I haven't I haven't tried it. Yeah, but like I think the story mode is just basically is set up just to teach you the basics of how to play it. I don't even know how long the story mode. I mean, the story is. mode was like kind of one of the main draws of the original game. I thought. I mean, not that yeah, not that it had a story of any like real value, but it was it was fun to play through. Yeah. Dang, Retro Dream going crazy. Oh. Right, drop in a dollar ninety nine, saying I love you guys, and also I love Forza Horizon. I, I, I have the the third one. Or the, I do have three on the three sixty, and you know we we both played the newest one on uh, on Game Pass. Yeah, it's and a, we were like weirded out about how like it says your name. It says your name. Like how how does <laughs> how is this has never happened to me like in a game before? How did they do this? I'm sure Dave would like to know if they can apply this technology to Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, and to there's Dave. another 4.99 from Retro Dream. Dang. Thank you. Thing, and also love tower defense games. I love you guys too so much. I liked must. I don't, liked... don't go back and watch the uh, the stream, the Act Razor uh, Renaissance stream. I, I liked I liked Mon you... I, I like Pixel Junk Monsters when I played that like. I was like one of the first PS3 games I got. I liked it, but that's that's I mean, like, the, I think mostly the, the extent of my defense might be my least favorite genre. <laughs> but thank you, thank you. Uh, but just just to kind of like crap on uh, Chocobo GP a little bit more. <laughs> I I I, it's, I couldn't believe it when I when I first tried it, and I and it was interesting because I I saw that Dave was going to be playing it, and I was like, oh, did he like order a physical copy or did he just like buy it off the store? And then once I I saw what it was what was going on with it, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to see if he if he bought it if it gives him anything else, and I I need to like see his reaction and. That's so you, I, like, you, made sure you to, like, discovered either, like, right as it was happening. You discovered all this before, um, before Dave Street. Yes. I mean, there but was I, like, I there was some if, sort like, of I know like they gave everybody like five hundred mithril or something like that. Yeah, well, so that's what I'm saying. There, there like there was some sort of like, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, sorry for the inconvenience. So. I, yeah, I, which is like five bucks. I know, but I guess my point is like that there must be some sort of blowback. I don't know if that was in response to I can't believe how much money all this is, or if that was in response to some like network issues or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, well, I I don't know. I think that anybody who paid $50 should get like 5,000 Mithril. <laughs> Honestly, like I think they should just give everyone who paid that full price mm. like a bunch of in-game currency because I think that's that's BS that you know, you got to pay 50 bucks to like have the opportunity to buy cloud to to to, to spend nearly another $30. To buy cloud. Yeah. That's that's incre like crazy to me. And out of, and or I think you can earn enough to get him, to have a chance at getting him by grinding up to level sixty. But I but I think Dave like played for like four hours that first night and he made it to like level six. <laughs> and I, don't you have like ten days or something like that? Is it ten days? So some some items are only available for ten days. Oh, wow. Like, I am exposed to microtransactions so infrequently in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. That I, like, sometimes don't even know what... Don't know what to think. Yeah. So, Kane27 says, There was some blowback on Chocobo GP. Uh, Square Enix issued an apology, gave them some currency, and then reduced the grind time. It's, it's 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 almost like they did that on purpose. Like they knew that people were going to be angry right out of the gate. And so I'm so like, oh, look, we factored listened. in, you know, like, oh, we're going to give these people some free stuff and uh, and reduce this stuff to a to a level that I have no idea if it's any more acceptable. Like it was like built in like that. That was like their plan the whole time <laughs> to do that. And then. We'll always be able to say, like, well, we did this, and then we just, like, bank on whatever comes in after that. Uh, there's nine ninety nine from Phenonymous. Thank you. Saying, it's thinking, keep the dream alive. It's thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joshua Hummick has been a member for 30 months. That's a lot of months. That is a lot of months, saying thanks for everything you do. Thank you for, for being here every single week. <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing to me. I was just talking to somebody about, like, like it, I, I just, like, love seeing all of the same, like, the same people every week. Yeah. Like, it, it's so cool to see that, like, people, like, this is, they, they wait, like, you know, like, they are, are sure to be here every week. For it's a long crazy. time, like, I've been doing it for a long time. You know? Like, it's... I mean, how long? How many years have we been streaming now? Like, six six years? It's, it's been a number. There's, there's another 499 from Retro Dream. Dang! You're going out of control. Thank you. Say, hey, don't hate me, but Plants vs. Zombies is the best video game of all time. I, I can't comment. I've, I don't think I've ever played it. I, I, I have it on. I have, I have it on a 360. I think. I think it might have been a, uh, a, a freebie at one point. I mean, there's there's my a kids, lot of different. My kids knew what it was. There's a lot of different types of Plants vs. Zombies games, though, because there's also like they're like more like first person shooter or third person shooter type things. I think. Wait, what? Aren't there more? Aren't there some, like, in addition to, like, tower defense, aren't there more, like, first person shooter or third person shooter type, uh, Plants vs. Zombies? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there's, there's several genres. Yeah. Plants vs. Zombies is the pinnacle of PopCap's classic casual puzzle game output. I like Peggle a lot. I play Peggle on my phone. Is PopCap even is PopCap still around? I mean, they must be, right? Are they owned by EA now? I wish yeah, I had stayed at the that means Garden Warfare One and Two. Those are shooters. Oh, 
uh, Damian uh, Antonelli is uh, moving to a new house, but haven't chosen one yet. You guys oh. are helping me get through this difficult packing. Thank you so much. Packing is like the is the worst. <laughs> I mean, I. I, 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 I always, like, sort of feel excited for people when they're moving, though, because it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, it it, 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 it can definitely be very challenging, but uh, I, I, I always like, you know, the, the feeling of, like, a fresh start, a new place, you can do something totally different with it, something you've never, you know, set up, set it up in a way that you, you know, maybe dreamed about, but, you know couldn't uh yeah i uh, definitely uh, but like i don't want to move again like i've i've <laughs> custom made this basement <laughs> to like never hopefully have to move again I said it before, but I'll say it again. So after the Mister's vi Mister video is done, like the the basement tour video, my 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 setup tour is going to be the video I do after that. Hopefully, that'll be a lot easier to to make. Uh, what is your What are your thoughts on on Golbez's theme? Oh, uh, it just now kicked in. Uh, he has this old gol, gol, Golby. It's it's okay, Golbez. I guess. Not not something I've ever considered one of my favorite tracks in the game or nothing. It's, it's no Kefka's theme. Another four ninety nine from Retro Dream with just an animated GIF. This is giving a high five. Of, thank you. Jeez. <laughs> Dang. But yeah, I, you know, I think that everything, I, there's not a lot that I can think of, like, that I need to change. But, I, you know, I'm going to talk, like, I'm going to talk a bit about, I guess, the combination, the combination of moving into this house and, like, working, like, making this setup. And also, like, them being in quarantine, like, during that time. And the combination of those two things combined with with ADHD <laughs> is, like, made me, like, fall into these, like, pits of... Every time I think of, like, oh, you know, like, I need to do this thing, but now I got to get this out and do this with it. Uh, it makes me... Saying like I'm gonna solve this problem completely right now, <laughs> and then it takes like a long time to like I'm gonna run this wire and blah 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 blah, and then suddenly it's been, you know, like several hours of, you know, like just solving a problem that wasn't even a problem. It's only uh, because I like just said I'm going to do this I need to do this right now or else I won't be able to like move on <laughs> no it's it's it is it's it sucks a lot of times yeah, the, the the problem I solved today was um, you know drum and I have several uh, streams coming up where like we're going to be playing the same game so mm -hmm. normally he stays at his house when we do that, you know, cause we're, we're just, you know, not co-op, but you know, we're just playing through the same single player game at the same time, you know, and he sends me his screen and, uh, you know, so, but the problem was, you know, we've got all of these, uh, we've got all these alerts now and he can't hear the alerts. And so he was like, I feel like I need to be able to hear those. So like we, I need to figure out a way to send him the alert audio over discord without also, while also sending my voice and not, uh, uh, not, 
uh, sending the, um, or not sending him back, you know, not sending the, the game audio. So it was, uh, it, it was like, well, what I ended up doing, like, I'd heard of this before, like this voice meter banana. Have you yeah, used yeah, yeah. that at all? Have you used it? Uh, no, I, but I know the name. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I might like, <laughs> I got it working. I'm not sure I entirely understand it, but I, uh, and I, I'll probably have to like set it up with our stream when I stream because this was I set it up downstairs. But I'll probably have to do it for us eventually, uh, just so that the same audio devices work across both our streams and the backloggery streams. Um, but <laughs> so I mean that 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 definitely took some fiddling because. Uh, what I was originally trying to do was like try to do like a try to output the uh, alert audio like and put it into my mixer, but it just it wasn't working very well. Like I was getting audio buzz with whatever cables I was trying. So, but but so this and then you spend all day trying to figure it out. I, I spent like most of the afternoon trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah and then it's like. So, and see, like you, you, you're always diving headfirst into stuff like that, though. And I'm always like but avoiding. The thing is, like I don't want to. I'm it's always like, avoiding projects that... like that, though. And so, like even just stuff like updating EverDrives and things like that. Like I'm always, you know, you're so good at. But, but, yeah, like maybe, but like at the expense of like other things. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's it, like, it's definitely been difficult, like at times. And I, you know, like I have good, good times and I have like difficult times and, uh, it's like, just when I think I have everything like functioning exactly the way that like it needs to, it's, it's like, I hate to step back because I usually say like, hmm, what what else could I do? <laughs> and it's like I just like look for things like, oh, maybe actually like I should run this way or like this way to this place and I can send it to this other thing first on its way to the other one. And it's just like it's it can make you spiral it makes me spiral like way too much and I feel as though I just like I I get the most work done if like I get up you know I enjoy that first cup of coffee and then I like get right to work I don't like let myself get into anything else mm. <laughs> there's another 999 from Retro Dream dang Jeez, man. saying so you guys are the best well, thank you. you. You've, you've, thank you. You've, like, you've, you've said it quite clearly by now. Yeah. <laughs> you said you couldn't, but you have. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, there is also uh, uh, 249 uh, MX from uh, Guillermo uh, Con Contreras. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you been one of the best companions this pandemic and even inspired me to enter the rgb world did my own mods got frame meister pvm etc keep it up cheers from chile oh thank you thank you thank you dang um i think that that is around the around 10 bucks because it's yellow i think if it's like real high then it's then it's red i don't know even i think the red is the highest Oh yeah, this game doesn't have like a, a auto sort either. I forgot about Dang, that. Dang, thank you though. Um 
I, I, you know, I think about the very beginning of the pandemic. I'm like, oh, we should, we're just gonna like release a ton of videos, you know, keep people busy. But you know, I think about like looking back on it now. That I wonder if anybody, like anybody, like creating videos, like like upped their amount of videos by a lot. I mean, or do you, does, can anybody say that anybody that they watch on YouTube, that they release more videos like during pandemic than they did before? Because uh -huh. I feel like most of the things I've seen have either A, stay the same or have been like less. Um, another 499 from Retro Dream. Dang, thank you. Saying critical hit. A little Super Famicom kind of like character. You know, uh, Damien Antonelli, though, you're saying uh, with my ADHD, I'll lose hours and not really know how I've spent so much time getting so little accomplished. And that's, I, I can absolutely relate because when I just get into this other stuff, then I just like things will lead to other things and um, then it's like oh my god I didn't uh, I, di I didn't get anything done <laughs> and it sucks it's horrible but I, I mean I'd be be curious, I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I like. I remember early on saying, like, I just want to like make videos and like you know keep people occupied. But you know, like once you have, you know, like everyone home with you all the time, and like I said, this like moving here, like 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 literally two months before everything, like. Two and a half months, three months before everything closed down. So let's just like that combination of everything would just like make me spiral. And it does happen every once in a while. Even like even with medication, like it still happens. And I think that like the medication has been the best when I uh, wake up and like I say, okay, I'm going to like get to work like right away. You know, that's, that's when it works the best. When I don't let myself get occupied with something else or just like mess around with something for a little bit. And, so, you know, like a lot of times you're just kind of like looking for stuff to get into. And I hate that I do that. And I don't know. It's so, it always weirds me out when, uh, when I remember that this this version of the game calls Palm and Porum Black Wizard and White Wizard instead of Mages. Hmm. Uh, you know, I used to be a night person, but I'm definitely a morning person now. 100%. Yeah, uh, show is saying having ADHD is kind of interesting. I can slack off on finishing a video, but spend six plus hours working on something like uh, Open Tendo from start to finish in a night. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes you'll just get into doing like 
things that are just inconsequential, I guess. Uh, Zane's dad, I basically just started getting up at 5 a.m. most of the time and, you know, and just having <laughs> that morning cup of coffee. And then slowly it happened. I Yesterday, as you know, Saturday, no alarm, anything, nothing set. And I woke up at 5.30. <laughs> so it, once once you get into that groove, it just happens. I'll tell you, though, like with the clocks changing. Man, look how much today, money I have. I'm just what's that? I just have so much money. I'm going to buy a bunch of white arrows for Porum. There you go. Because I'm pretty sure... Uh, Mylan X, as he's called in this version, is is weak against. Uh... Oh wait, but I just bought a bunch of single. Oh no! <laughs> this, now I have, do I have to like com can I combine them? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> There's no. another dollar ninety nine from Retro Dreams, Dream saying I'm drunker than you think I am. <laughs> well, if you wake up in the morning and you say like, Oh my God, why did I do I can't, that? I cannot. Like, Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I I don't know exactly how you do it, but you can, like, you know, uh, can cancel the charges or whatever. I'm just going to keep buying these white arrows because I want to <sighs> quip her with them. I don't know. See, like... Oh, I can buy 10 at once. Duh. Wake up at 6 a.m. and it screws up me all day long. I mean, it takes a few. You got, what was it? It takes like 20 days or something like that to, to create a habit. And, you know, but I'll tell you, like, I, I definitely sleep a lot less than oh, I used to. Oh, there's sort. And, and now, even if I wake up in the morning. It's all the way to the I feel as though, uh. I can't just like lay in bed and like maybe go back to sleep. I'm like, oh, I gotta get up and I have stuff I can do. And I can have my coffee. <laughs> but, you know, like really I do think about like, oh, I, I gotta get up because I have stuff I need, I gotta do. Or stuff I can do. And that that is prime time before anybody's up to like get the stuff done that you wanna, Why like to work on some stuff that you wanna work on. There we go. That's better. But I, I used to have the hardest time getting out of bed. But I, I think about it now and I think about like, you know, my daughter is like the same way. I think it is impossible for my daughter to go back to sleep. I think that if she wakes up in the morning, it is impossible for her to go back to sleep. She could not close her eyes and go back to sleep. I used to be that way to an extent. So you couldn't go back to sleep? Well, well, I just had a hard time going back to sleep if I if I woke up. But I, I mean, and I can, it can, it can happen. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, I, I, I guess I've just kind of developed strategies to where I, I have a easier time going back to sleep if my if my if I am stirred I mean I usually yeah. get up to go to the bathroom one time overnight you know so and which us, usually is, is not a big deal uh, you know Scepter Sever says, as you get older, you realize your days are numbered. And like, I wonder if that has anything to do with it as well. I mean, I, certainly I think about uh, my grandparents. That you, they used to get up. I used to think they got up so early, but it was really just before the sun came up. And that was, you know, like it, that probably was five, five o'clock. And, you know, when I was a teenager, that seemed so early to me. But, uh... Oh, I don't. I don't think it was the. I don't think it was coffee that got them up. But I think it was. I think it was their grape nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I 
a grape nut cereal, but it's probably a combination of grape nut cereal and and coffee. Man, do you really See, I, I only cannot. have Pollum and Porum with you when you go Stay to Not Ordeals? I don't, I don't remember. The, only, the only time. I would ever stay up until like 5 a.m. is if something unexpectedly breaks and I cannot go to bed. Like if my computer like messed up and like I can't and like it would stop working or something like that, I would not go to bed until it was fixed. Oh, there's ten dollars from Fred Northrup. Oh, thank you. Thank you. With no message. I'm only as old as I feel. <laughs> it tends to show in the person too. You know, what I need to do is I'm 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 so excited for the warm weather to be back because you know like like the like last fall. My wife and I went on like, like mile and a half, two mile walks every morning, and it was like the best thing ever. And it's been so difficult to do that with it so cold, and especially with the dog. It's just it's we we it's walk, day, but it's cool like dogs. it's just so much starting and stopping because she's just you know wants to wants to, wants to smell everything, right? Does anyone know yeah, how much MP? Cold. But once it gets warm does. again, and you know, it was getting warm, and then it, it like snowed a whole bunch two days ago. Uh, but we, you know, we went, we're going on these uh, walks every morning, and it was great. It was like, we like talked more than we had in like, like, most most of the pandemic it seems like even though we're home like all the time you know like we always say like you know everything's fine we're just like in survival mode survival mode and uh but like these walks have been like the greatest thing for us ah uh, there's uh two dollars from quest quest for best thank you thank you same big fan of Golden Sun. Have you played Shining Force? You played the first one, right? Uh, yeah, and I I have the second, but I've not played. It. I've also got Shining Force CD and yeah. Game Gear. I've only played which, CD. Which CD? I, I mean, it. Game Gear is kind of the same thing as CD. CD is like the two Game Gear games, kind of. Um. Uh. But I, I, I've played all the Golden Sun games, but unfortunately, I don't even own any of them anymore. Because <laughs> they, they fell victim to some of those old, you know, ill-advised collection purges. Um, I, I liked one a lot. Uh, and I liked the second half of two. And then mm -hmm. three was... Mm, like, the, the funny thing about 3 was, I was like, oh my gosh, like, these conversations take so long and they never, ever end. <laughs> and people were like, oh yeah, the first two games were like that too. And I'm like, really? Were they? Like, I, I just like, I either didn't notice or it just didn't bother me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, Alberto Balam Navarro Medina is asking, I apologize if this has already been said, but I'm curious how you all have the uh, stream set up. Are y'all using RetroTank 5X or something like that to get a crisp Im image? Yep. Yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm playing this, uh, well, on, on real like Super real Nintendo. Yep. It's, it's my, you know, like I said, I'm not the original owner of it, but it is my original cartridge. It's your, it's your your original Nintendo tape. I gotta go. To, I gotta go pee real quick. Okay. All right. Be right back. 
I'm filling my water too. Well, things are definitely looking good for uh, getting to Palatine. Like, that was kind of like my goal. I, I felt like that was kind of ambitious to get to Paladin. Like, ambitious, but not like super duper crazy uh, to get to Paladin Cecil. But it's looking, looking like it's going to happen. I don't remember when Sid joins. I don't remember if someone ends up joining before fighting Scarmiglione or whatever you call him. Can I, if I just like cure all of them, like I'm, are all of these undead? Oh, fire heals the spirits. Oh, cure also. <laughs> okay, spirits, fire magic, not useful on them. Oh, Tellery joins here. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Oh, did Crix really get out of the country? I didn't. Where where was that information? I, I I was looking. I looked at his Twitter earlier, and I didn't. I didn't think it necessarily sounded like that. But that's that's good news, if so. Me saying, come up here, come sit with me. Lay down right there. Go, go up. Oh, he's on his way to spin. Cool. Five dollars from returned orc monk. Thank you. Any tips for dealing with a doggo that wants to eat my controllers? He's chewed up one Xbox controller and it says fixate on my SNES slash PS2. Ooh, that's rough. You know, I've got a um I've got a PC engine controller that looks like it may have may have been bitten by a doggo at some uh at some point. Uh Fortunately, Sandy has never shown any interest in wires uh, at all. Uh, when she was a puppy, she did chew up the, the cardboard sleeve that is in the <laughs> Bioshock 1 and 2 collection for Xbox 360. Um, <laughs> uh, so she, she was interested in cardboard, uh, but she's never been interested in wires. Like, if it's if it's like of a certain size, like if it's not big enough to swallow, she's not interested in just chewing it. 
And she has a pretty good sense of like, you know, I mean, maybe you just need to get your dog more toys. Like, because whenever I like give her like something that is a toy, like she, she, she has a very clear understanding of, oh, this is, this is mine. And I, I, I can, I can treat it as roughly as I want. Uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> really though, Sandy's the, the biggest problem with Sandy is that she, uh, doesn't, she understands that these are her toys, but she doesn't really play with them on her own all that much. It's always like, I want you to throw my toy and make, yeah. make my toy exciting. Uh, I, you know, yeah, that's, that's how Nelly is. And I think I, I have a lot of fun with it because well, I, she's I, so little and the, the, she just like slides around on the floor oh, so yeah. much that I can throw it and she'll like try to stop for it and we'll slide a oh, whole bunch. Sandy does the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I have fun with it too. And, and honestly, I mean, you know, I mean, part of the reason I, I, you know, God dog in the first place was to get me, you know, moving a little bit more right you know so it's you know it's it's good that she she wants to play because it, it you know it, it encourages me to you know you know she, i mean if she if she does not get like at least one or two you know good play sessions a day she's she is she lets me know it and she'll just stare at me and stare at me she, and she stare but at she me. doesn't bark at you she doesn't she doesn't bark like, like to say I want something. Like she'll 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 sit and stare and whine sometimes, but it's mostly a sit and stare thing. Yeah. Uh, there was there was you, so you were answering the. I was answering the one about the the the. Yeah. Orc There's another nine ninety nine from Retro Dream. Retro Dream. I hope you don't wake up tomorrow and be like, what, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> if, I think it was it, definitely the booze. If, I mean, if, uh, if, if you do, you know, wake up and wonder what have it's, I it's, done? It's okay. It's okay. It is okay. Seriously. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, there's $10 do from Return of Orc Monk saying, oh no, it's the wires, the actual controller. It's the, it's not the wires, it's the actual oh, controller. Huh. The it's actual a great, uh, Pyrenees, so he, Took the whole darn thing out of his mouth and chewed it like a chew toy. Oh, no. He likes the idea of getting of, I like he likes the idea of him getting more toys. You know, I, I, I Sandy has like a stupid number of toys. Like I, I can't res like every time I have to like go yeah. buy dog food, like I, I usually buy a toy when I'm at the store. I just can't resist because she's like she 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 is just like so appreciative. Like she is so happy and excited when you maybe give her she a new should toy. start a YouTube channel where she reviews toy dog toys. <laughs> she's just she is so happy when she gets a new toy. I just like I can't I can't I can't help it. I can't resist. <laughs> you know, so she you know just just needs more things to to work at. But she does like she will like sometimes like sit and chew at a toy, but usually not really. Like she just uh look at all these like singular one cures I have. I, I should probably do something about that. Um sort look at you you're silly <laughs> this is uh, two dollars from Sean White thank you saying it's the booze boys <laughs> is, that, is that Sean White the uh, the snowboarder is that Sean White snowboarding is that the one Uh, you know, um, yeah, Quest for Best is saying, do you guys do any soldering? I have a DS Nitro Capture, 
light, not fat, and would like to add RGB out. Would happily send it to you guys to make a video about it and try it if to do it. I'm, I have we, people we, RGB. We I had no it. people at RGB modded those. That's pretty cool. I would. I mean, I would definitely if it if you end up RGB modding it. I mean, I, I've I've been curious to look at them before, um, but I I don't recall ever hearing about an RGB mod for it. I mean, that's that is that is certainly of interest. There you go. Sandy looks so silly right now. Here, oh well, no, I was I was going to show you, but then as soon as I moved my hand, she moved her she moved her head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, $1.99 from Retro Dream saying, uh, thanks, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. Choir Boy says, uh, one of my local game shops has one for sale, but they're, they want $8,000. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a little more expensive than I was expecting it to be. Sandy, look, look at up there. Who's that? Is that Corey? See him up Me? there? Yeah. I always, you know, I think it's funny to like every time I come up, upstairs or something like that and I see Nellie. Like I always like act like it's the first time. Like I'm, I'm surprised that she's there. <laughs> <laughs> How like, does she react? I, I just like I like seeing her just like looking and then like seeing her tail start moving a little bit. <laughs> is she about so, full so... grown now? Like in terms of size? Um, no, she's probably about eighty percent there. I mean, she's not big. Yeah, I mean, I think the smaller the dog, the quicker they mature. Yeah. Well, she's getting pretty good at going downstairs and stuff now, and. Every once in a while, she just like comes down here on her own, and I love it because like I don't know it's gonna happen. She just comes down to say hi. And and you have not really had trouble with uh, like like she's 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 not chewing she's anything. Not no, chewing. I, would, I mean she's she's chewed a little bit like on like the bottom of the table, on like a, like a coffee table mm -hmm. a bit. Her, her puppy but teeth haven't fallen hasn't, like, out eaten, yet. Like right? anything that she's, I well she's she's just she's eating things all the time. Like half the time I don't even know how or where she like found the thing that she's like eating that she's not supposed to be eating. Well, well I mean, you, you, you know what I mean? Like it's just you have that situation. It's like where did you even get this? Well, I like, mean, I, like why? Is, I I mean, you you live in a house with with kids, so. <laughs> You know, yeah, me, but even then, me it's like, like it's pretty it's pretty easy for me to keep my stuff, you know, on the shelf and whatnot, you know. Well, the thing is, is like, but like like one time, like an S, she started eating an SD card. Uh, see, I mean, like I can understand like her if she found it if she was eating an SD card, I'd be like, I can understand that. But like somehow the other day, she found like an unopened package or an opened, but only one of them taken out a package of like uh like power receptacle receptacle covers oh. <laughs> obvious that sounds I'm cool. like but she she didn't like get all of them out she was like carrying the box around like using like the the top flap i'm like where, where i don't even know where you found that <laughs> like i i know what it is and i remember getting it but like i don't Remember, I, I have no idea oh, how you got that. Wait, oh, okay. It just takes a second for that to update. Oh, wow. Hey, hang hang so, on. I'm uh, gonna, return I'm to gonna... Orc Monk says, true, mine is 100 plus pounds and it has eight months till he's technically mature. Oof. I love my big fluffy doofus, though. Okay. Sandy, do you need 100 to go? 100 pounds. Do you need to go pee? Hang on, I'm going to take Sandy to go, go out. Being fussy. Go pee? Come on. Four ninety nine from Retro Dream, saying the smaller the dog, the quicker the mature. I'm I. 
She's got to be almost there. I think that she's supposed to be full grown it within 10 months. And she's six, six months. So I guess, I mean, half, a little bit over halfway there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I cannot comprehend, like, having that, that strong of a sense of smell. I mean, that, <laughs> that's, like, literally all my dog does, is she's just, like, sniffing stuff. And I wonder if she'll ever get sick of, like, sniffing stuff. Like, in the house, at least. So those those nitrous uh, nitro captures the DS light DS light controllers are they just like actually DS lights that where the screen doesn't work or something? Apparently, dogs smell the way that humans see. So it's almost like they can like can they like visualize something by sniffing it. Sniffing stuff is her morning coffee. That's 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 probably a good way to put it. I don't. I think it's really interesting that she just like sleeps on her back a whole bunch though. And it, it's so silly though. I mean, there was a point. So once upon a time, before we got a cat, my wife was like, "I don't want to get a cat, and if we do get a cat, it's like not sleeping on the bed." It's not, it's not allowed to sleep on the bed. So we got a cat, and it's, it's slept on the bed. <laughs> and then I tried to, to, like, get the cat to, like, go under the covers and get under the covers next to me. And my wife was like, you, you cannot have the, uh, the, the, the cat is not getting under the covers. <laughs> and she never got under the covers. And we got this dog. The dog is, like on the bed all night long from basically day one. And Can she now jump the dog on the bed? Like, the, now the dog is like getting under the covers. <laughs> Can she jump on the bed by herself? No, 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 no. She definitely cannot. We, we, it, it, she'll never be able to. I mean, she can barely get on the, uh, on the couch. But it, I, I crack up so much because she just like like sleeps on her back like just like like it doesn't even look like it, it's got to be comfortable. But I mean she'll uh, when she like gets under the covers, I'll like rub her belly a bunch, and if I stop, and my arm is like right there, she'll be like, <laughs> and kind of like tapping it and if I don't do anything she'll be like <laughs> you know so she'll like slowly get a little bit louder and louder <laughs> I'm like you're just like a you're like a a child like a real person like a person like a human I'm curious is, is anyone in the chat uh, anyone in the chat ever had a dog or know a dog with with epilepsy because Sandy seems to at least I hope it's just epilepsy you know I mean but she has had since last October she just had a uh, she had a the third that I as far as I can tell she had a had a had a I think the third seizure uh, oh right, yeah. yeah and she she had. I mean, I I freaked out. It was like one a.m. 
Yeah. Just before going to bed, this was back in October. And I thought she wasn't breathing. And yeah, like, I, I, I just, I thought it. this was it. Like, I had no idea what was going on. And, you know, the, the best, you know, they could determine is, you know, she had a seizure, you know, and it sounds like it's not really a big, like, I mean, as far as I can tell, it's like not something to actually be like, like, it's not like having a stroke, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, the, the vets didn't seem overly concerned. The main thing is just like, when it happens, just like make sure they're like in a place where, you know, they can't hurt themselves. Um, and, uh, one morning then in January, like there was poop and a little bit of pee and she sleeps in the laundry room behind a baby gate. And, uh, and there was like this, like, you know, like the evidence of like drool that like gone all the way around her neck. You know, which that was a you know a major thing. It was just a ton of drool the first time, but then uh, on Thursday, like I saw it like happen. Like I, I was playing with her, and mm-hmm. like it, you know, it it just happened right in front of me, and I saw you know it was the first time I really seen the whole thing. You know, and was able to like you know just be calm and you know just sort of be like I'm here. You know, it's okay. You know, and. You know, her legs. So she just like her legs like, were seizes up, kind of. Yeah, like we were playing, and then all of a sudden, her like back sort of hunched up, and she just sort of fell over, and you know, started being like, you know, moving her legs like, uh, you know, like, like she was like almost like she was trying to stand up and and couldn't, and then mm-hmm. like I sort of like kind of got her on her side a little bit. And yeah. then her legs were just kind of like straight. It was almost like her whole body had like a Charlie horse or something like that. Yeah. And like her, her and it's like completely rigid. Her, and, yeah. Her legs were just straight out and just like sort of, sort of, sort of just shaking a little bit. And then like, you know, she just sort of, then, you know, it sort of seemed to subside and she started, you know, just doing, you know, more deep breaths and then just sort of, she looked tired, you know, her eyes kind of drifted close a little bit. Then she just started drooling a whole bunch. And she, she, every time, you know, a piece of poop has like come out in part of this process. Like she just, it's just like, she has no control. I mean, my only real fear is like, you know, like what if it just like happens when she's like going down the stairs or something like that, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's the scary thing to me. Um, I should have. And there's like nothing you can really do about well, it. Well, I mean, right? there. I mean, she can't, can't. She can't die from it, right? I. I, I mean, I, I. I mean, I. Like I said, as far as I know, like I don't. It's. It's like. It's. It's like not like having. You know, like having a, a stroke. You know, like the only. I guess the only thing to be concerned about is like. I mean, it's. It's possible that. Uh, you know, it. It could. You know. It, could be caused by like you know a tumor or something like that but i think just you know just assuming it's epilepsy is you know kind of kind of the more common take i guess uh you know but i mean you know my my my, um my cousin has a pomeranian that has seizures and she's like she's like 13 or 14 years old you know, and has had them, I believe, for a very long time. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not too worried about. It. I'm just worried, like, oh my gosh, like, what if she's on the stairs? Like, should I not let her go up and down the stairs? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, the, it's been about two and a half to three months between the first three, but. There are meds, but my understanding is that they're kind of hard meds. And, like, once you're on them, like, you can't go off them. And, right. like, it's it's kind of really only something that's generally done when, uh, you know, it, it is like a, you know, redu- it's, it's it becomes, like, so frequent and so severe that it's, like, reducing quality of life. Hmm. 
So, I mean, it's it's a little scary, but I mean, the vets didn't really seem all that worried, so I'm not all that worried. So they can have a heart attack or go into a coma, but I mean, that's something you can't avoid. If that's going to happen, that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely scary, but... Don't put her on meds, they do liver damage. Yeah, I've, I think that's what I, I heard about. So it's like, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a last resort. What? Right. You beat me twice. What? What? His name is Mylon. Mylon, and why Mylon, Mylon X, the, 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 they call him Scar, it's translated like Scarmiglione. Or something like that in the in the other versions. Oh, okay. Scaramanga. <laughs> is that is Scaramanga from Bond? Yeah, that's uh, that's the man with the golden gun, Francisco Scaramanga. <laughs> that should actually probably get Cecil fully healed here. A lot of people are saying that CBD oil is good for treating dog seizures. Hmm. Paul Bergham says, get, get Sandy a Manny chew toy. Yeah. She, uh, I think that was when she was still a puppy. Uh, me and drum streamed, uh, um, streamed, uh, uh, Grim Fandango remastered. And, uh, she, like games with like flat like uh you know uh pre-rendered backgrounds like with a character moving around like just something i think just like that it's just really easy for her her to track it you know because there's like not the motion of like a, a game camera she loves watching the character move around in that <laughs> I've I've never heard of CBD oil for dogs, but oh look at this! I didn't realize you were. Yeah, I was on Mount Ordeals. That's that's where you wanted to make it to, didn't that, you? That was my goal. Like I'm, like it was, it was ambitious, but you know it was it was what I wanted to do. I know you wanna you wanna play. We'll 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 play after we'll play after after the See this is what she does. She's like, I want playtime. To be a real paladin. Am, am, am I supposed to be defending or something? I, I honestly forget. But you must not fight now. You must not fight now. I was supposed to just defend. I, 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 I honestly forget. You want to use the DSI? Is it good? I, I love the, the DSI uh, XL. Eventually, the dark nut kills himself. The dark nut. <laughs> the dark nut. I mean, Lucas Peruzovic would know, being a dark, <laughs> being a dark nut himself. <laughs> I, I, that's my my nickname for Nelly because she's always kind of like digging at stuff. So I call I call her dig nut. Dig nut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I saw it someplace. I, I, I call her Dig Nut. Go for Dig Dug. Yeah. Or or, or, or she maybe she could be Ms. Driller. <laughs> Ms. Driller. Yeah. That was $1.99 from uh, Dial-Up Chronicle saying this was my first RPG. It's a good one. 
It's yeah. like that's a heck of a way to start off. It is, yeah. Oh yeah, tell her you remembered how to do media. It's me, Mateo. <laughs> Mateo, Mateo. <laughs> I am Mateo. <laughs> I'm a ghost. And a supernatural enthusiast. <laughs> Does he say it's me, Mateo? <laughs> it's a me. It's me, Matello, a supernatural enthusiast. <laughs> and Pal and Porum, like, get turn the stone, like, right now, right? No, it's when, um... Oh, everyone's recovering. Oh, wow, I... I remembered Cecil started off at level one, but it's like crazy that his HP is 600 to start with. Yeah. He's got the legend sword. Oh, and I, I guess my like, my like dark knight equipment is just like gone. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, no, no, it's, 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 when, it's cool when... transformation though. I mean, like this is like the first act of the game, right? Yeah. It's like the completion of the first act. I mean... This this would be disc one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Paul and Porum turn to stone when you go back to Baron and fight... Uh, fight... Uh, What's his name? Cognazzo? Yeah. The water... I always love that background, theme. though. Like, it really just makes the world seem so big. Oh, yeah. He's not really powering through the game. It's just that it's faster paced than I think a lot of people probably remember. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, you, you've seen me. I've gotten kind of confused in a few places. I'm like, oh, where, where do I go? Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been exploring the dungeons to make sure I get the treasure chests and stuff. I'm just going to run away. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want. There's no sense in fighting on the way down right now. Especially since once I get back to Mesidia, I think I'll call it a night. Yeah, I, I, I just, I think that a 20 to 30 hour RPG is... So good. Yeah, that's, that's all they need to be. I mean, there's definitely something to be said of an RPG where you just like... I mean, I, you know, like some of the longer Dragon Quest games and the Persona games, like there's definitely an element of, uh, you know, attachment that you get from being with it so long. But some games, like I feel like Bravely Default, for example, like that series does not earn its length, I feel. Like they're good mm -hmm. games, but they are not made better by their length. You know, they're, I, I think they're made worse by it. Um, and uh, so the, but, but like things like, you know, Persona, like I feel like just, you know, the sheer investment you've put into it and into the characters and, and, and all everything like, you know, that, that is worth it. Man, speaking of Persona though, like, like I, I was under the impression that Persona 5 Strikers was, like, really well-received. Uh, mm -hmm. And, like, the scenario is, is so far very good. I'm, like, I think about 13 or so hours into it right now. The scenario is very good. It, like, it, like the all of the other Persona spinoffs I've played... I'm just going to run from this. Uh, all of the other Persona spinoffs I've played have had really pretty lousy scenarios. Like, just not very worthwhile like like it just doesn't feel like it adds anything it doesn't feel substantial in a meaningful way uh this this is this is better than that for sure um mm -hmm. it's it, it's pretty compelling like you know i but like, the gameplay is so bad like i i've never played a muso game where i was like like this isn't fun like it's this is not 
like the reason Muso works is because of the um, the the you know sort of large battlefield. Like the game, the the combat is it works because of the large battlefield. Like it's 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 a way to design combat that you know, accommodates a large battlefield, large amounts of enemies. And what they tried to do, which I think is a huge mistake, they tried to kind of keep the dungeon crawling element in the game. And Mm -hmm. so you're really kind of just the game, the game could be designed the same way, but just have regular RPG battles, except it's got these like mini Muso battles where like you encounter an enemy on the map, and it becomes a bunch of other enemies and you fight it and it's done. And it's just like, it's, it's not fun. The, the doing that, like it's that larger battlefield that makes, that makes Musa work. Uh, I, 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 I just don't, that. I don't understand what they were thinking. Uh, and like, I, even beyond that, like, I kind of feel like the, uh, the like the the combat maybe is just not as good as other Muso games. Uh, I, I I don't I don't know. There's just there's just a lot of problems with it. It seems to me, um, it's it's not not quite what I hoped in the gameplay. So this is something I almost never do. Like I actually put it on easy mode because I'm just like I. I do not care about these battles. Like I just do not. Yeah. I do not and, care. You know, like nothing, I like nothing wrong with that. Like it's, I, I'm, that. I'm just playing the game for the story at this point. And, uh, yeah. and, and I, I'm enjoying it more because like, that's, that's what's good. You de- like you definitely won't have to replay a battle if you don't want to. Right. Right. Uh, there's $5 from Andy 64. Thank you. Thank you. Saying, hey guys, what are your top three favorite third party companies of the 90s? I go with Capcom, Konami, and Rare, not necessarily in that order. Ooh. I mean, Rare. I, I, would, mean... I would take those first two. I'd say take uh, Konami, uh, Capcom, and I'd say probably Squaresoft, yeah. especially considering like PS1 era on. Mm-hmm. I mean, PS1 era Square was just like doing so many interesting and fun things. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, I mean, I, I would make the exact same, I would say the exact same thing, Capcom, Konami, and Square. I mean, rare, rare, I mean, you know, I, I my understanding is like second party isn't really an official designation. Mm-hmm. But that everyone calls called rare second party, you know, and some of the games on N64 rare actually published themselves. Like, uh, I think both conquer and maybe perfect dark, I think might actually be published by, uh, by rare themselves. Um, so I mean, uh, since they were a third party, but mostly Nintendo did the publishing. Hmm. So, yeah, I would say those are the ones I would say for sure. Yeah. I s- Sane Rub is saying working designs has got to be on Tri's list. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be more geared towards me. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, but, like, I don't think I would put them on the list. I, I love, you know, they're not what, a developer. What they were doing, but I, I would not consider them, like, even remotely close to the others, especially just. They're a publisher. Yeah. I mean, they're translating stuff that was like, that would never have gotten translated in a million years. But I like, I don't know. Like they really released like four to six games per like per console. All right. So right at three hours. Nice. You uh, want to you want to load up that? Let's see where the, that number two is. Sure. Can you, can you load I'm that number sure, two? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure one, two, and three were all on the moon at the last save point. I am, I, I think that I think that two is. Oh wait, no. Right before you go back to the Fusoya is here, so it can't be. Yeah. 
But that's good, actually. Oh, see this. I'm is... pretty sure that's like when you go back. If you go back to the yeah, I mean, to Earth, it's like I think it's when the. I don't know. I mean, this, this is actually a great place to have have a save, though. I I think that I kept it here because something happens after this, and I thought it was just so cool. It might be when the the uh, the giant thing happens. Oh yeah! So if you go back, okay. I bet that's it right here. Yep. Yeah, so I, I specifically made this save because I thought this part was so cool. <laughs> Scream! <laughs> <laughs> I think that this... When this thing is walking, it, it just takes forever. <laughs> it's like got to take two stops, or two steps, and then it starts blowing everything up around it. <laughs> <laughs> and it does this like like three times. <laughs> well, we get the idea. Let's check out the other side. Uh oh, the the last save. Well, or this, this the... one's like barely any ways into the game. Yeah. Uh, twenty one twenty two. Yeah, I'm this guessing is... that twenty one yeah, twenty two this... might be. See this this one. This one ha this one is an end game save and has everyone and it, it, it has a blue it's it's blue. So <laughs> so I deleted the other one I think was also an end game save, but it it had a black uh, uh, menu. So does Fancy Star have a black menu? Is that why you did that? No, I just I I no, don't Fancy think Star that I did it until menu. like I was at the, almost at the very end of the game. Or at I least didn't Fancy even Star change does. it until the very end. That's so weird. What? That why why you have changed? I mean, the blue blue is like I mean this 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 is like this is classic RPG menu. The only thing this is missing is you know the gradient of Final Fantasy VI. You know that's yeah. You know that was definitely a step up. No, but I but now like I would never change it. And in yeah. fact, like, I mean I, black like, black is classic Dragon Quest, of course. But blue wouldn't work in Dragon Quest. Blue would be weird in Dragon Quest, but. This is not Dragon Quest, it's Final Fantasy, and Final Fantasy means blue menus. You know, that that is probably my biggest dislike about Final Fantasy IX for being a game that is all about like celebrating the you know, like the past history of, of the series. Mm -hmm. Like I just hated that like the default Oh yeah, uh, that's the first thing that's text the boxes are gray. That's the first thing I do every time I turn on Final Fantasy IX is change the box to blue. But it's really it's a weird blue. It's like kind of a lighter blue than it has like a texture to it. Too. Yeah, which is fine, but like I wish it was a darker blue. Like it's it's a weird color for it. They actually added uh, at some point. Uh, I don't know when it was added exactly. I think it was like some time that I was taking a break from Final Fantasy fourteen. They added like actually like a blue menu color, and like I was immediately like yes, like I, I switched to that immediately. It actually even has like a like the the X, the button that you press to close the menu is actually like kind of like this pixelated X. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also just noticed for some reason, like I I I feel like you either didn't understand or. For, for some reason, you've got... I don't know why Cecil is in your back row. Like, I guess King can jump, so that makes sense. But Rosa, why would Rosa be in the front row? You may have not really understood the Rose <laughs> if you played this. Something... I don't know why this is two hours after the other one. Maybe you play it again. Did a friend borrow it at some point? Or maybe did you keep one? I mean, this was a used... Your, your copy was you know, used. You know, it's very, very possible that this could be Chris's. Chris Shaman's. Oh. When he borrowed the game from me. Because I'm pretty sure that he, he borrowed it and played through it. This might be him. Actually. Cool. So we'll is, we'll say that he doesn't know. <laughs> he didn't know to put he didn't work. know to put your your white mage with a bow in the back row. <laughs> yeah, I mean this I one mean, this game is a little weird in in that 
Well, I now I'm I'm curious to see what it's like on my copy. Like, because you you saved it over that first game. Uh huh. So I want to see if I have mine. But see, like in Final Fantasy IV, you have to have there's like there's two slots there, like three slots in the front row, two slots in the back row, or you can change it to be two slots in the front. But like in in like five and six and seven, you know, you can manually change, you know, it doesn't matter which slot they're in, you know? All right, hang on. Nope, I, in the front row, I have Cecil, Kane, and Edge. And Rosa and Riddy are in the back. Yeah, I think that's normally that's what, what you're supposed to do. I, I think that's what you're supposed to do, although... I mean, I, I think... He, that, that, that has to be Chris. He's... he's uh, two hours more than, than mine, and like his characters were like lower level. Although I think Kane is okay in the back row because I think dragoons, like if you jump, the row doesn't matter. But like, there's also really no reason to have Rydia in the front row. I mean, besides, she has like way she has the least HP, so you should have her in the back row. And since Rosa has a bow, you may as well keep her in the back row. Although Rosa's HP is Edge's HP. HP is not that much higher than Rose's. I think it's interesting that they call summoners callers. callers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe summoner was too many words. I don't I don't actually know like what the like what exactly they call them in Japan, but you know, it's become at least they call them summoner here now, so. But anyway, that was that was fun. You know, this is something something I think we should do more often. Is just like, just play like, RPGs that we've already played. Yeah, I mean, once where we I, no, I think that like it'd be really fun to play Chrono Trigger and just see where yeah, we get Final to. Yeah, Final Fantasy six, even five. Yeah. Mario uh, Mario RPG is one I've had on my mind to do for a while. Like, like I have no clue where I would end up in you know three and a half hours of Mario RPG. I have no yeah. idea where I'd end up. It, it's been even longer since I played Mario RPG through all the way through Mario RPG than this. Like I played through that game, like probably like 10 plus times, like in high school. Like I played through that so many times between middle school and high school. I played through it so many times, but then like, I don't think I've played it since college. I'm pretty sure I played through it once in college. And I don't think I've played through it since. So, I, I, we, yeah, we should definitely do this more often. Someone says, uh, uh, Final Fantasy VII. Do you think you could get out of Midgar in this stream? I think I could. <laughs> I think I could. Like, uh, think challenge, challenge accepted. Then? Challenge accepted. <laughs> I think I could. I think I could. I definitely think I could. Yeah. That'd be fun. I want to do that. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's what next time you're streaming Mel, nah, you I don't do. know I, I'll, I'll try to space these out a bit but this was I enjoyed doing it. I have no idea if I'm like go, like I don't necessarily have an intention of like going ahead and like finishing this run I just I don't know I just just like I you know I won't play a ways into Final Fantasy 4 and like that's that's okay like I I was able to get some enjoyment out of it whether I finish it or not you know? <laughs> What's the wager? If, if Try fails, he eats the chip. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> you know, when people have forgotten you, you still haven't eaten your chip. Oof. <laughs> All right. Well, good Anyways, night, uh, everyone. Thanks everybody who uh, everybody who donated tonight. It was it was crazy. It was a crazy night. Thank you so much. And, uh, and Hopefully, I hope everyone hopefully has a great week. by this time next week, we'll have like a really solid idea of when exactly the Mr. Video is coming out. I think yep. we're, we're going to be pretty close. Pretty close. It's not going to be out by then, but we're going to be pretty close. It's, yeah. The, the yep. light is very so. much at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs> good night, everybody.